Welcome to Shardcast, the Brandon Sanderson podcast. We're a bunch of mega fans giving you the news discussion, and of course, a whole lot of opinions about Brandon's works and the Cosmere. I'm Eric, and joining me is Ian. Hey, I'm your writer, and I have survived the attacks from the Sons of Honor that were preventing <laughs> me from being on here today. That's true. Yeah, that's true. They were attacking your computer. First, they changed mm-hmm. it to a jet engine, though, so that was the main problem. Yeah, which I think is back. Oh, well. Wasn't, wasn't the change at all. Great. Also joining us is David. I am David slash Windrunner, <laughs> and I'm happy to announce that I seem to have been one of the people with the fewest technological problems this morning. <laughs> that's true. And, that's true. That's yeah. genuinely surprising. And I turned my own mic volume down by myself correctly. <laughs> wow. So congratulations wow. to me. <laughs> this is actually a big deal for those of you who don't oh, yeah. know. This is actually a big deal. Also joining us back from a while, like we, we just have such a big cast and I feel like we haven't gotten people in a while. It's Shannon. Hey, what's up? Hi, I'm really glad to be here again. Uh, it has been a while. Uh, I'm Gray or Gray Watch, depending on where you find me. And yeah, super excited to talk about this today. Also joining us is Evgeny. What's up? Hello. I've been delegated to the bottom yeah, that's of right. the ranks. That's I have right. fallen that's right. from grace. That's and right. like grace is not a giant person, but like falling from her still hurts a little bit. I mean, you are very short. Her height. I, I am. Yeah, <laughs> I am. Uh, but so you you would think that by so like, you know how when babies fall from the second floor or whatever, they're fine. Uh, what? <laughs> Are what? universally fine when a baby falls from the second floor. What? You know, yeah. it, does this does this happen in your day to day life, Evgeny? Is this is this why you're single? I didn't know this was common knowledge. <laughs> Look, no, I didn't. I did not. I'm not clear. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad the, that the our very was, long episode is already completely derailed. Thanks. I, I I feel like the combination of my size and cushioning throughout the body should provide me with some resilience against falling from heights that's the anyway so uh i've been uh i've been saving some things i want to show you guys oh great oh no um and so as as you as you may see oh yeah yeah some 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 things have arrived at my house yep the skyward uh, flight collections uh out it's it's quite a beefy book it is it is actually a chunker yeah it's a chunker um and so, uh, yes. th- so the 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 boom slug. <gasps> it lights up. No, or, just, I guess uh, it's just the, it expanded. It's, it's yeah, lighter. Yeah, yeah. It's lighter on it the inside. It looked like yeah, it yeah. did. You could have lied about that, and I would have bought it. <laughs> so I, I, I will say, my my professional review of this uh, squish ball. Okay. I thought this was gonna be way harder than it is. Like I thought this was gonna be uh, like a, a a finger muscle building. Oh. Oh yeah, one of those. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. No. Super soft, super squishy. Uh, I can't make the glasses pop very well or the shades, which I've been trying to do for a long time. You're getting time. a lens. That's kind of, you're halfway there. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, is this like a thing that we need to clip and put out as a separate video? Evgeny uh, uh, reviews the, the boom <laughs> slug. Argent, Argent, Argent reviews. <laughs> Our reviews. Yeah. Um, and, and then I got the stickers, which oh, Brandon they have all of them. Yeah. didn't show off very well on stream, but I am better than Brandon. And so I will I will do that for <laughs> you. A bold claim indeed. Okay. All right. Well, it's good to know you're so humble, Evgeny. <laughs> uh, I like the modesty... bubblegum. That's adorable. I didn't see that yeah. one. <gasps> There's an yeah. old man slug. <laughs> there <laughs> is. Yeah. Mustache. That's hilarious. <laughs> And then oh the the thing that some people have affectionately been calling the love slug, which is probably not going to be the name. Nice. <laughs> oh, so those are those uh, are really this, dreams so, there, Arjun. Those are really this, cute. I mean that that comes from Jancy, not from me. I'm I am just the messenger. Do not shoot me. So this this uh, ends my uh, uh, show off session for the next fifteen minutes. Okay. Oh God. Okay. Well, only for the next fifteen minutes. <laughs> yeah, only for the next fifteen minutes. Ian, stop derailing the episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, lastly, but certainly not least, we have Jess. Hi. Hello. I'm Lady Lameness, and unlike Arjun, I can actually take going last gracefully. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. the The shard cast order is a complex. <laughs> a jigsaw puzzle that I think only I understand. So yeah, it only exists oh, in Eric's head. It's one hundred percent just. 
There is a logic. There any, is a logic. We don't there, have any input. There is kind of a logic. Like, it's like who was on Shardcast the earliest, right? Mm-hmm. So it's kind of okay. kind of that order, you know? Like who was on the show earliest? Anyway, none of that matters because we're finally talking about the Stormlight Five prologue. We've gotten your not thousands, but it felt like thousands of people. Like, where's the Stormlight Five? Where? Where's the prologue? Where's the prologue? I'm like, I'm sorry. Brandon put out a lot of stuff. Apparently, it's 60,000 words of content that he's put out is, since uh, in the month of March. So March it took first, us a while. Yeah. yeah, I know. It feels like a thousand years ago already. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, and, yep. and yeah, so we, we had to get through the secret projects. We're finally done with that. So... We're back to regular, not not really. We're not back to normal because we're still, we still have this to talk about. The Stormlight 5 prologue and holy crap, guys. I I didn't expect this at all. And what, why don't we just go around? It's like, what were your short, quick reactions on this? Let's establish a spoiler policy before yes. we go. Oh, into we that. should probably do that, oh. huh? We will not <laughs> be talking about the secret projects. No, and I think uh, if we yeah. ever are talking about the secret projects, we'll, we will have something in the front. Uh, I'm hopeful that we won't learn anything about the secret projects anymore until they come out. So hopefully that's not going to be a problem. Maybe. Just making sure everyone's aware yep. because that's been... Some people were trying to avoid that. Yes, and so yes, yes. This yes. episode is... <clears throat> dangerous in the general sense because this is stormlight 5 yes. but also safe in the, in the other sense right We're, we yeah. are going to have full cosmere spoilers though aside from the yes. secret projects yeah, yes. super yeah. full cosmere spoilers <laughs> holy crap so and it's full stormlight you know just the usual stuff so what so, yeah what'd you think ian yeah. so i was okay waiting for stormlight 5 it's like i'm like i want to read it but like i'm like it's still a ways off. Like, I'm not going to get hyped. I am so hyped right now. <laughs> know, right? I'm like, this is a problem. Yeah. I'm like, I'm uh, just so excited yeah. to get Stormlight 5. I know. It's still so far away. It's so far away. Yeah. <sighs> ah. New Stormlight's so exciting. Mm-hmm. It's really cool. It's kind of surreal to read it a little bit. Like, I, like after having read the first prologue, like, I think I, I, think I picked up Way of Kings in, like, late 2010. So it ha- we're going on 12 years since like you read that first scene and you really just don't even understand at all what's going on. <laughs> Not and even you're kind a of like, huh, like th- I guess this will be a mystery for <laughs> us. And now 12 years later, we're getting all this, all of this kind of crazy stuff that I don't think anybody could have well, begun to have called when we first read it. And there, are- it's obviously not perfect. Like there are polishes to come to this, but I, I was very, very excited by it. Uh, this is kind of everything I wanted from this prologue. I was like, I was waiting in anticipation of like, or maybe dread of like, and now we find out something about Gavilar that will make him like, not redeem him, but like, it will, (laughs) you know, put him in like a new light. And I was like, please don't. I'm so happy with what we got. I'm just like, yes, thank God he's an idiot. Oh, I'm so vindicated. I feel I'm so happy. Like every this is no matter what happens, the fact that he's such a moron is is really all I wanted from this. And I got it. And oh, yep. I, I'm so satisfied. I'm like, okay, great. I, I can rest. I yep. no one is gonna be def- has to defend Gavilar's character anymore. Woo, we made okay. it. <laughs> but was he justified when he pushed down our tar- towards alcoholism, Shannon? Because it seems like he might have had some good reasons. <laughs> oh my god, that re- was horrible. With a good reason way. for good reason for treating Navani the way he does, and yeah, duh. Okay. We'll we'll, okay. we'll talk we're, about his character. We're fine. No worries. I'm just But it is pretty great. Is, He's such This a is what guy. I wanted. This is what I wanted. <laughs> so yeah. Evgeny. I I don't disagree with anything that's been said. Uh, I, I I think seeing Gavilar progressively fall further and further from grace with each prologue, essentially, <laughs> he's the kind of character where the more you learn about him, the worse he gets. And and there's a depth to how much he sucks, <laughs> right? You can always go back to that well. Um, another, another thing that hasn't been mentioned yet uh, that I 
don't think it is going to be because Jess is the only person after me. Well, no, Eric. no, no. There's me. No, no, no. Don't you cut yeah, me but, off. But this, I have this important is... things to say, Evgeny. I don't, I don't, I don't think you're gonna comment on this. So, um, <laughs> fused Gavilar is an idea that's been, uh, that's mm. been here right, and yeah, there. Okay, sure, right. Um, or or Gavilar's not dead, not necessarily fused, right, right, right. Champion Gavilar, things like that. Yeah, yeah. things like that. Uh, and so to live was a very tantalizing <laughs> prologue name. Uh, now, obviously, we've read the prologue. We know that it ends with, oh, well, he died like all men die alone, which is a great way to, to end this prologue. But it, I, am, I am a little sad that we, we are probably not going to get uh, Champion Gavilar or whatever, because the, the juxtaposition and the parallels between him and Dalinar and their journeys are so many and they're so powerful that I think I can't think of a better champion from a narrative perspective than Gavilar. He has been everything that Dalinar has been, and also he's been so many things that Dalinar just chose. Okay, I, I will not be a crap person. So, well, we we thought Kelsier died. It sure seemed like he died when we saw him die. When we but saw yeah. him yeah, die, David, but, don't but you that dare. Wasn't, that wasn't <laughs> People... from his POV. People but he, we die didn't. When they are yeah, we just didn't follow him into the cognitive realm. We don't know what he found there. It's true. It, it's, it's, that it's, is true, though. <laughs> it's I'm possible, just, you know, but I would be very surprised if Gavilar sticks around. I don't think it'd be the right move in terms of Brandon having trouble with resurrections being really. Kind of fun. <laughs> no, that's but, a um, it's a good this point. This person I've killed five times. <laughs> <laughs> He's back, really, guys. That should have been a clue. Like, if, if I can kill him five times, I can kill him six times. <laughs> He's already a herald, basically. <laughs> Jess, what did you think of the prologue? I agree with David. I think surreal is a good way to put it. Like, to finally get this after so long, and, like, I haven't been in the fandom for as long as other people have, but it still feels surreal to finally have the answers of what was happening from Gavilar's perspective. And I also agree with Shannon about feeling vindicated about him being an idiot and just like not being a criminal mastermind. And that is so cathartic. It's nice. Like I, I'm so pleased with that. Yes. It's, it's so good. <sighs> so I, I think it's not going to come to anyone's surprise that my comment is Ba Edo Mishram. Boom. This is going to be the what Ba Edo Mishram book. <laughs> I, I, I can tell you right now, my Stormlight 5 review scale is going to be very simple. It's, it's a very simple 0 to 10 scale. 0 to 10 bottom mushroom was uh, not enough bottom mushroom. 10 out of 10 bottom mushroom was amazing. That's the only thing I care about. Not really, but, but I got to play it up. And thank you to YouTube comments on the Brandon YouTube video. It's like, Eric's got to freak out. I saw them, and that was, that was pretty tight, I got to say. Uh-uh. So I'm so thrilled. This is going to be the bottom of book and I can't contain my excitement. It's going to be so good. We have so much to talk about. And also, I just love just the excellent dramatic irony of, of th this entire prologue of Gavilar just like, I'm going to be immortal. And like, we know he's, he's dead. He's super dead. It's like, I'm going to be immortal. I'm so great. The meeting with the Parsh woman went so great. <laughs> Just, nope. No, it, it didn't, went Gavilar. perfectly. <laughs> it, 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 actually, it didn't. And just mm -hmm. e note the continuity on this scene and it is going to shift. We're seeing this super early, right? Like, things are going to be a little different in the final product when it goes through, you know, continuity revisions. Mm -hmm. But you know What's what? Continuity. What Brandon nailed, though was just Gavilar's character and just that dramatic arc of him just, yeah, no, you're dead. You're, you're totally screwed. And just, he nailed that so much and I loved it. So do, do we just want to get, get right into talking about uh, Gavilar's character? Because I would, the yeah. only thing I could think of is if we had any things we wanted to say is like, uh, I wanted to see this or I wish this thing, there was something that I did. Oh yeah, sure. Go for it. I was very pleased with what we got, and I fully accept that the prologue couldn't have been every scene we saw Gavilar in <laughs> right, from true. his perspective. True, mm -hmm. yeah. But there is a part of me that really wanted to see what was going on in his head when he was talking to Ash and I. Yeah, and, that's true. And like 
we know that he's a, a jerk, but I wanted to see the Navani fight from his perspective. Yeah. And that's uh, like, it is, it yeah. is what it is, <laughs> mm-hmm. but I, I understand why that didn't show up, but there was a part of me that was like, Oh, like I really wanted to, you know, see it, but I, I like the, but Thytokar was there. So there, there were things that <laughs> balanced it Thy- out. So. Thytokar is there. Yep. Yeah. Um, I, no surprise, wanted to see the Navani argument from Gavilar's perspective, just because I wanted to see, like, how much he actually sucked. Because, like, we know he sucks. Like, it's very clear here. Yes. Like, what's going through his brain and those when he make those specific comments? I'm just like, yeah. Mm. It's like, a- like we got the. Oh. Go ahead, please. Like, we got the comments of him thinking about Dalinar and his Mm -hmm. opinions on Dalinar and, like, getting that, but during the fight with Navani as well, that is something that I wanted to get Mm -hmm. more of. Just to Mm -hmm. show, like, how much of an awful person he actually is. Just to really nail nail in the coffin, like, show just how terrible he is. I, I did like, though, that it seemed like he even even as mean as he was to her, he knew that she was brilliant. Like he kind of it kind of kept coming up where he was like, should I bring her in on this? And then he was like, but I'm too arrogant for that. And yeah, and I, but I, I like that he that as poorly as he treats her, he still can't even deny like how great Navani is. Yeah, it, it's an interesting thing, because like. As soon as I read the Rhythm of War prologue, I was like, oh, he's one of these type of men and is the, the domestic abuser. Right. Got it. I, I, I'm I, familiar with them. Uh, and he's a controlling asshole, but like doesn't hate Navani. Like, like it's, it's a very interesting thing. But like he did. Wow. He really twisted the knife to Navani in the Rhythm of War prologue. That was mm-hmm. like really mean. And horrific. As he did with Dalinar in this one. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. He did the exact same crap to Dalinar. That's totally true. It's like the reveal of why he brought up the codes. Yeah. Was so good. That was. There's there's a lot of that. There's a lot of that that's just like, wow, I never would have thought that it was just Gavlar being so horrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. like and being wow. a manipulated asshole. Yeah, it, that oh, that's yeah. his character basically, manipulative asshole. Yeah, and and he just like completely like kind of is like failing Elhokar as a father too. Like yes. you can tell that he thinks he's not up to snuff and he's not interested in, in trying or helping doing anything about it. He's like, oh well, I'll marry Yasta to Amaram and then I'll have a good a good legacy. And like that, it's just like the coldest, most like dismissive decision that he. And same with with Dalinar, where he's like, oh. The Stormfather is saying, like, there's more to him. And he's like, nah. He's a lumbering like, idiot. Is. Yeah. yeah it, and it's the sort of thing, like, Navani knew just how bad he was. But, like, none of the rest of his family yeah. does. Yeah. And, yeah. like, Navani tried to tell Dalinar in Way of Kings, and, like, Dalinar didn't want to hear it. Which I'm like, I think was a smart move, because I think that would have destroyed Dalinar. I don't... Yeah. <sighs> Dalinar was at a fragile point. I'm like, I still don't want him to find out just how bad guy was. You no, know, like, it's seriously like that. The assassination has been so central to Dalinar that just knowing, mm-hmm. oh, Gavilar pushed Dalinar to be drunk there. Oh my mm-hmm. god, you're so it's, horrible. Oh, the, I kind of do gone. want Dalinar to find out about it because I okay. think he's at a much better point to learn about it now. And like, mm-hmm. I think. Two things. I want Dalinar to be able to forgive himself for that night because, like, he was being manipulated by his brother. Mm. But also, I think I want Navani to not be carrying this awful legacy along with her and being the Mm. only one to know. And, like, she's now married to Dalinar. Like, they should be able to talk Mm. about this now and work through it together. And like I just like mm-hmm. both of those things to happen. Yeah, mm-hmm. true. That's that's exactly what I was gonna say, Jess. Is I really I really want like I think this prologue is signaling Gavilar is gonna be very incredibly important in this book. We're go- like mm-hmm. he he will be relevant to the events of the present day story. Dalinar is certainly maybe not gonna find out everything, but it's gonna find out a lot about what Gavilar really was. I believe. Yeah. And I will I I want him to be like a little shocked, and Nirvana to be kind of be like, yeah, man. Uh-huh. I- like I, told- I, I tried to tell you a little bit. <laughs> I think 
a reveal like that is actually going to go really well relatively well for Dalinar at this stage because I think it's going to play out very similarly to him remembering Evie's death. Mm -hmm. That's another burden that he carried for a long time and then it nearly broke him at the end. But his takeaway from, from those events and those memories were, yes, I did those things. Yes, I was a terrible person. Yes, I was being manipulated into this stuff, but that doesn't absolve me of the blame. And I like it's an interesting parallel between Odium and Gavilar in here. Uh, and so I, I think he's gonna take it not in stride, but like he's gonna okay, yeah, that sucks, but I will. It's fine. I'll I'll, I'll get over it fairly quickly. I don't know. Even if Navani and Dalinar had a big talk, that uh, Dalinar would realize like why Gavilar said the things that he did to Dalinar at that night because Navani wasn't there mm -hmm. for that, right? So mm, I don't know yeah. if we're gonna get that and. Also, we did sort of see at the end of Words of Radiance that he sort of let go this idea that, oh, if I wasn't drunk, I could have stopped the assassin, right? Mm -hmm. So he somewhat absolved himself of that. I still think it would be really good for him to realize, like, don't hear a worship Kavlar. Bad idea. <laughs> like, really? No. No need for that, Dalinar. You're good. Okay. Well, I think the... I do think this is absolutely signaling that Dalinar is going to find out about Gav uh, Gavilar and what he was like, but I, I definitely th think this is also signaling that the majority of this is actually going to come from the Stormfather because... Oh, that's true. We yeah, have, true. We, this, this is kind of showing us that uh, the Stormfather and Dalinar have a lot to clear the air with. <laughs> they, have a lot to, they have a lot to talk about, um, it mm -hmm. seems um in a way that we didn't know they had to talk about before we read this it was uh and so like it, it seems that the stormfather knew what gavilar was like in a way that probably navani didn't even uh was able to see because no, stormfather was so aware of like the secrets that um you know and so it's like the stormfather kind of like actually has that angle on what gavilar was up to and what he was thinking and what he was really after so i kind of have the sense or this is what i would like to see but i think it's also going to happen that the stormfather and, Dal and dalin are, are going to talk about him yeah, yeah that's totally I, right yeah i also have a theory of how that sort of reveal could happen because we see at the end of rhythm of war a reunion of sorts between two brothers Ooh. through the spiritual realm and timey-wimey shenanigans oh. that turned out very well for Kaladin. I don't oh. know if it would go as well if Dalinar were to interact with the spiritual echo of Gavilar. <laughs> Fascinating. That's 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 really plausible, though. That's all, Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All the yeah. mechanics are there to, for something it like that. It could be at a low point. And be like, I need my brother's wisdom or something. And it's like, wow, you're horrible. I don't know if this is a good idea. Maybe <laughs> we should try something else, Dalinar. Nope, I am Dalinar and I will do what I want. And then he just realizes, oh, no, we we are very different people, Cavalar. Nope. Mm -hmm. And there is an opportunity there for like further interaction with the Stormfather or further involvement with the Stormfather because it seems like book five is, if not leading towards something to do with the old pack old pact um that is at least a theme that's going to get explored and that will naturally echo back to gavilar's wanting to get involved uh, i mean on that i never knew how quite serious like this whole resetting the oath pact is but reading this prologue is like no that's definitely gonna be a thing in this book like mm -hmm. brandon is not this is not a plot thread that he's gonna drop this is this is the plot of this book and like the bottom from stuff is the plot of this book, right? This isn't uh, recruiting Xia not to join the Ghost Blood. <laughs> it's not bad. Yeah, like, right, exactly. He tried. He tried to reset the Oath Pact six months ago. Didn't work. <laughs> now we're on to the new idea. It probably this is the advantage of Brandon plotting Rhythm of War and Stormlight Five. You know, and just like because mm -hmm. he did sort of outline both of them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so that probably helps that he knows what needs to happen in this book. Um. Do we want to talk about the Stormfather? We're kind of... We, yeah. I, I feel, I feel like we got to talk about the Stormfather. Yeah. The entity referred to as the Stormfather. <laughs> Don't you start. Hey, okay, let, so, uh... so there have been a lot of conversation in a lot of places. There was even a poll on Reddit where over... like It was like 70% of people thought that, that the Stormfather is not actually the Stormfather in this prologue. So let's discuss. What do you think about that? 
<laughs> David has a thought. Yes, I have a thought, and like I'll just come out and kind of stake my position pretty clearly. I think this is definitely the Stormfather. I think that what we're seeing right here is Brandon wanting to show off a side to the Stormfather that he has not shown off a ton of before, but we have seen some ruthless edges to the Stormfather in the end of Words of Radiance, where he tries to kill everybody. And then says, Dalinar, lead your dying people to failure. And then the next book, he's like, I'm going to play along. And so there's a darker side to the Stormfather. Fair, fair and, point. Yeah, and he he's a liar. And I think that another thing that happens is when Brandon is trying to show this other side to the character, there's like a little bit of polishing that needs to be done to like make it fit a little better with the Stormfather that we're more familiar with. And so mm -hmm. that will happen. I think it will be clear. But to me, this is definitely the Stormfather. And the big revelation is... The Stormfather's got secrets, and these are going to need to come out. No, I I totally agree, and uh, de there's definitely something to be said that this is this is first draft weirdness. Um, but I also think it's the less interesting version of the story if this is not the Stormfather. Like, it is so much more interesting and fascinating to me. Like, if this is the Stormfather, and we're seeing that he has something big to to share, that there's going to be something he hasn't told Dalinar yet or has been hiding from Dalinar that's like definitely the more interesting story here like it's uh if this isn't the Stormfather I'm less interested to be honest uh it's I love that that's true yeah. and and like what has the Stormfather lied about already right yeah like, oh, like that's yeah. a very interesting thing that we have to discuss as well but mm -hmm. yeah. there's a couple more things uh so yes I, I believe this is the Stormfather and for a lot of the reasons that were brought up I, a, a couple more reasons to me are, uh, first of all, I don't think there is any actual foreshadowing that this is not him. I think people are like reading into his tone and into his words and into the fact that he's lying, which is a valid way to interpret that. But like at this point in the series, if that's the thing you're setting up, if you're setting up that somebody was lying to Gavilar and you were, you were doing this in book five, you, you have to like let the reader in a little bit. And the way I read all of the mannerisms of the, of the storm, or maybe mannerisms is not the right thing that I'm reading here, but like the the way he conducts himself, and like the the lightning and the thunder that flash through his form, and the way he rumbles and and things like that. Um, the scene where Gavilar kind of sees his face or Stormfather's face, and his eyes emerge from this shimmering image that he has taken and like Gavilar thinks how he sees a giant storm and rains and things like these are all such strong signs to me that we are dealing with the real Stormfather like if someone was imper impersonating the Stormfather there I don't think we would get these kinds of deep signs that we associate with him and the thing that really does it for me is the smallest thing. Uh, at the end, when his voice mid-sentence switches from the regular typed voice to the small caps we've grown to associate it, not necessarily with the Stormfather himself, but with, like, shards. And divine things. Yeah. 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 And so that mid-sentence switch to me signals, okay, the personality that we've been interacting with is retreating, and we now start seeing the Stormfather that we see back in, in book one. I think that a lot of the evidence that I've heard so far about it not being the Stormfather come across to me more like continuity errors. But I think one of the things that jumps out to me as like, well, is it the Stormfather or not, is at the very beginning and all the way through, he's talking about heralds and like, making Gavilar a new herald. And after the first time listening through, I kind of forgot the specifics of whether Gavilar was talking about becoming a herald and the Stormfather was just kind of agreeing along, or if the Stormfather was being really direct about it. And the Stormfather directly says that he's trying to make new heralds. And this, of course, has never come up before and never come up to Dalinar. But I think this is just the Stormfather learned a lesson with Gavilar that maybe he shouldn't give as much information as he does. Mm -hmm. And that is why it hasn't come up with Dalinar because 
Gavilar's whole plan of, well, I'll become a herald and then I'll just constantly keep the war going. I think that's when the Stormfather realized he made a big mistake, not only with <laughs> going to Gavilar, but also telling him about the herald thing. So I think this is just the Stormfather withholding information until he feels it's the right time to give it across now instead of being up front. So I think it's the Stormfather. I I agree that it would be a less interesting story if it wasn't the Stormfather because it just introduces a brand new element into something that has so many elements in it to begin with and so many mysteries in there already. We don't need a new one. We just need one that's already there. Just a little corollary to what Jess said too. I totally agree that the Stormfather's incentives change and that's why he potentially could be treating Dalinar different. And I think the other thing that's important there is a herald dies and the status quo changes. And so whatever the Stormfather's plan was before, maybe that doesn't work now that a herald has died. Right. We, still, we have no idea what that does to the Oath Pact. Like the desolation began. Uh, I definitely think that it's possible that with Gavilar, the Stormfather maybe gave the visions in a totally different way than he gave them to Dalinar. Because the Stormfather, like the visions in book one to Dalinar, there's nothing, Stormfather gives Dalinar nothing. There's just vision, you get what you get, have fun. Uh, so it's possible that like the Stormfather was a lot more accommodating to Gavilar and like giving more context so like people never thought that Gavilar was, you know, going insane, like they thought with Dalinar in book one, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And this is the moment where the Stormfather's like, yeah, that didn't work. We're never doing that again. Screw that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm just going to give no information whatsoever. Have fun. Uh, and you'll deal with that, Dalinar. And certainly the Stormfather is very good at not talking uh, to Dalinar about important facts until a lot later right well oh it, it's just like this is so clearly the stormfather actually says here in this first draft version but it's he says it explicitly i'm changing how yep. i do things this exactly. wasn't, it's like of course he's not gonna have the same methodology and like he's not gonna act the same way as we've seen him before like it's like of, of course yeah you you've gotten lazy <laughs> I love that line where Gavilar's just like, what? <laughs> yeah, we, 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 they, like, like in, in the moment, it's funny, but on a, on a larger scale, it's it, I, almost profound because the Stormfather is learning similar lessons to the ones that Radiance do, journeying before a destination. You can't just mm -hmm. dump all of the information on your chosen Bondsmith candidate or Herald candidate. And, and like they have to go through the, all the growth to get to the point where they need to be. Yeah. Um, I have two comments mm -hmm. to all of this. And then I have my own thoughts on the story of, uh, <laughs> oh on this whole God. situation, <laughs> which is that it also in this chapter, this, the storm father explicitly says, I will never choose anyone in your family. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense that like when Dalinar does start getting visions, like there's nothing from the storm father. Cause like storm father doesn't want that to, prog to progress. He is very grudging. About eggs, it. He's super begs grudging, the yeah. question of like why Dalinar got the visions in the yeah. first place, because Definitely. like the storm father, like, how much does the Stormfather actually choose who gets the visions? Because, like, it's like, I don't think it's entirely of his own volition. Like, the, like he was, like, directed to share these visions by honor. Like, he has to do it. What that means, I don't know. But it does tie into my thoughts on the situation. Okay. Which is, after um, Words of Radiance, I and some other people thought that the Stormfather was just Tanavast's cognitive shadow because he refers to himself as a sliver. <laughs> right. Which means something very specific in the Cosmere. Now, by the time of Oathbringer, it's like, that just didn't vibe. And Brandon says like, oh, Stormfather doesn't know what he's talking about. Blah, blah, blah. Like, stupid explanation because brandon knows what sliver means in the cosmere and brandon shouldn't have screwed that up 
Like you You're don't not better about this charged. At all. No, I like. I, I think Brandon's the, right. I still maintain that. <laughs> I like. I. It's a valid explanation, but I think it's. Brandon did a disservice to the fandom using that word in a situation where it could mean like the very specific Cosmere thing, but he did not mean the very specific Cosmere. Ian's thing. been on this for many years. If you, if I, you didn't, if you can't tell, <laughs> come, coming up on the decade. <laughs> oh my god! Pretty much, I'm like, I'm like, it no, is. that's it. It's like it makes sense for like Wendell to make that mistake, or like. But, like, still, like, Brandon, like, I'm blaming Brandon. I'm not blaming the Stormfather in that situation. But <laughs> I don't know if it was Brandon or if it was, like, Peter that this is, like, that the Stormfather absorbed Tanavast's cognitive shadow and that gives him enough, like, essence to be considered a sliver. Which, who knows what that means. But, like, what if the reason... Stormfather is so sus in this chapter is because of that little bit of Tanavast is doing shenanigans. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I don't know I used... what's going mm-hmm. on. Yeah, and this is more or less the vibe I was getting out of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, we see Tanavast leaning Stormfather for most of this chapter, and then at the end we get St- Rider of Storms leaning mm-hmm. Stormfather as we know him. Hmm. See, I don't know if I agree with that characterization. Like, I kind of, I kind of feel like the small caps, like distant one, makes more sense to be the honorary side of things, and kind of like the petulant, like kind of more hmm. small-minded spread of storms is the stormfather we see most of. But it is, I don't know, it's a little tricky there. Um, just to touch on Ian's first point about the visions, and a thought that I had was that. Maybe the Stormfather is compelled to give these visions to someone. Like, he doesn't have a choice about whether he's giving somebody the visions. And then there are specific people who are more likely to be Bondsmith candidates that he's drawn to. So he's giving Dalinar the visions without really wanting to give Dalinar the visions. And that's why he's not talking to Dalinar, because he doesn't want to be doing this, but he feels compelled to do it in some, um, some form. Mm-hmm. Jump, jumping off of that, the one thing that it kind of reminded me of when you guys were describing it was how Vin was kind of chosen out as preservation successor for reasons we don't really understand. But <laughs> the, shard, like, the shard kind of knew who it needed in some way. And maybe that's destiny, whatever that is. <laughs> maybe. But maybe this. Uh, but mm-hmm. it, it was something that just jumped up into my mind as kind of a parallel. Uh, yeah. So that was kind of my assumption, Jess. Like I, I hadn't actually thought to articulate it, but. You know, and a lot of people were sort of confused about like, well, the Stormfather said he was never going to, uh, you know, go for any of the colons again. But why did he pick Dalinar? This is an inconsistency. inconsistency. And I don't really think it is. Like, I think I think this answers the question of like why the Stormfather was so mad at having to bond Dalinar in the first place like he was pissed at the top of your theory he was, he was, he was so mad and you know like I don't think it's I don't think this is a mystery I think this is just an answer to the to an already existing question um you know so but more that leads me to think about like is uh it casts what has already gone on with Dalinar in new light like so what like let's let's if we're okay moving on like what has the Stormfather actually told Dalinar that's now in doubt? Um, yeah. What What else has he lied about? Uh, and I think inversely, too, it's interesting. The one truth that he gave Dalinar that he refused to give Gavilar was that the Heralds were around. The Heralds are alive and they are existing on Rishar and they did not die. Mm-hmm. And that's something Ooh. that he decided to be seemingly honest about. It, yeah, I, I, have, I have a thought about this. So I think... I'm not sure how much the Stormfather has lied about things to Dalinar. Because I feel like there, there's a few things going on. One, the Stormfather specifically says he and Gavilar do not have a bond, which is interesting in and of itself. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that is going to be a continuity thing that needs to be adjusted, but it seems like this is accommodating Stormfather, whereas with Dalinar, the Stormfather only begins to talk to him when it's like, oh no, you did actually say the right words. Although, Bondsmith words and Herald words, we're going to talk about that too. Because uh, there's some weirdness there. But like, with, I feel like the Stormfather may have grown to 
respect Dalinar in a way that he never respected Gavilar. Because Gavilar, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like the Stormfather was lying to Gavilar for very specific reasons. <laughs> That's like, mm, I don't know about this guy in some ways. And, and Dalinar, in a lot of ways, ends up interpreting the Stormfather's visions in a much more honest and straightforward way. Yes. Like, I think he kind of is more going for the spirit of what yes. Honor was trying to ask, whereas Gavilar's plan to unite humanity by returning the void bringers to create an awful cataclysm <laughs> seems like less like <laughs> yeah, what Honor was seem probably what hoping going for. for yeah. uh, but I, I kind of wonder if they're in the sort of state where Dalinar was for Way of Kings and most of Words of Radiance, where, like, a proto-bond is kind of there but it's not yeah. hasn't been formalized yet he hasn't said any of the words and right. so like something could happen but maybe the Stormfather is trying to fast forward gavilar to a point he wants Dalinar to get to maybe something else yeah. like who knows but but i i feel like that's maybe the difference that the Stormfather like feels comfortable it's like no this guy does speak the words it, it's like in line with the spirit of what i'm going for he can handle the truths. And like, even in Oathbringer chapter 38, where we learn about the Heralds, the info dump chapter, like the Stormfather does ask, like, are you actually okay to learn about this? Because this is not in line with your religion at all. Whereas it feels like the Stormfather just went in line with what is like, oh, you were going along with the lie of Voronism that the Heralds are fighting uh, for the Mm. Tranklin Halls, right? Uh, And Mm -hmm. the Stormfather just sort of went along with that basically rather than actually telling them the truth i definitely mm-hmm. think the two colin brothers just have a very different relationship with the Stormfather, especially mm-hmm. post words of radiance like dalinar is exhibiting the the attributes and the behaviors that the Stormfather maybe doesn't respect at first but eventually grows to like rec- okay yeah this is th- this person is following the path of radiance I've been, since you've asked the question, I've been trying to think of like any instances where I do think the Stormfather was lying. And I was like, I really can't think of any. It may be because it's been a while since my last reread, but the only thing that gets close is the like when he says, like, I will not become a blade for you. Because <laughs> like there, it, there is like that, the question of whether or not um, Bondsmiths get plate and blade. But it it's always weird to me that they didn't. And Dalinar does summon something to open the oath gate. And the Stormfather is not thrilled about it. No. Yeah. Does that hurt the Stormfather? I can't he, quite it, remember. I think they kind of to to me the implication in Rhythm of War is that that was a moment where Dalinar risked killing the Stormfather. In some way, and that's what the Spren were all pissed off about when they were saying, "Like the your dad spread, almost yeah. killed the Stormfather, Adolin." And Adolin's like, "I don't know about that," because Dalinar didn't tell him. So I think Which, it was like, not good for him. But I wonder if that's because he's fighting it. Like if, it's like the Stormfather well. was like worked with, if like if a Spren like works with their Radiant, no problem coming as yeah. Blade. If they're at cross purposes, like that probably causes some issues. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Think thinking about other potential lies that the Stormfather could be telling. The two that exist in my mind is there are a lot of times when the Stormfather goes, maybe not a lot of times, but there are times when Dalnar asks him a question about the deep past and he goes, I was but a wind then, you know, and <laughs> yeah. I have no idea what happened. And I'm like, that's a very convenient thing to say that you don't know what happened, <laughs> but I bet you did. G- going off that, Grace thinks that a lot of the stuff about honor raving to the Radiance, like right before the Recreants, she thinks all of that is su- suspect. Uh, so. I think there's, there's a possibility there. And I think that tying into that similarly, what the Stormfather has said to Dalinar about the Recreants is almost certainly an incomplete truth. At best, That's based certainly on the true. We are yeah. starting to learn. Yeah. And yeah. so, and who knows how much of that is is real deception or how much of it is a partial truth. But I think that's very suspect. Also, Karen was not in on those conversations with the Stormfather. So any conversation that Karen is not in on is, is suspect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted to make a joke that the tension cohesion thing with the statue in Oathbringer, <laughs> oh easy God. lie. The Stormfather was just lying. No continuity issue. Not a problem. But they, they did feel the need to change it. So just it's had to make that shadowing there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Work. Stormfather's yeah. lying. Actually, the, the stoneward surges were flipped by honor at some point. <laughs> oh, God. No, 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 no. We don't need to go um, down that tangent. But one one 
I, I don't know if I would call this a lie, but it's it's an interesting point of discussion. Is in in this prologue, it seems clear to me that the Stormfather is either directing Gavilar to path of of heraldhood, uh, either actively or just like not dissuading him from that. Like he is is. Mm-hmm. If not encouraging him, then at least not getting in his way when it comes to that. And so it is very interesting to me to consider whether he wants the same thing out of Dalinar. Yes. Yeah, because... Whether yeah, there exactly. is something that comes at the end of a bondsmith's ideals, or or maybe Dalinar is even more unique than a regular bondsmith, which in some ways he is, right? Right. Uh, there's just like... Well, at, at this point, you can join the Oath Pact, or you can replace somebody in the yeah. Oath Pact, or at this point, you have enough power to affect the Oath Pact, as Ishar probably once did. Because Ishar was a bondsmith before becoming a herald, <laughs> that a, a bondsmith probably could do shenanigans, like reset the Oath Pact, what have you. Like, it's... Yeah. Like Dalinar would be the one person who could do that. I, I agree with that. I think it's mm-hmm. interesting to me that the Stormfather is, you know, I don't I'm I'm very curious who brought up initially the idea that Gavilar is gonna be a herald and then who's <laughs> going along with this. Yeah, but right. That's that's kind of a, a, a tangent, but he's trying to add him to the oath fact. He's trying to make him a herald, but he's not saying, okay, step one, like let's go get the honor blade from the shin. Like he's not trying to make him into give him bondsmith powers. He's not bonding with him. He's not sending him after the blade. He's just trying to add him to the oath pact. It's so weird. And like saying the words to be a herald, like words to be yeah. a radiant. I have no issue with that. Makes perfect sense. But mm-hmm. the words to be a herald. So what? there is, there is at least one place where the Stormfather deceives Gavilar in this regard, or at least commits mm-hmm. a lie by omission, in that Gavilar believes, like he's walking around the other blades, and he's thinking to himself, oh, maybe one day my blade will join these and will gain mythical powers and things like that. Like, the Stormfather is clearly not telling him that the other blades are not just a shard blade that mm-hmm. has been imbued by True. additional powers. Mm-hmm. Right, sure, sure. Yeah. I do also want to um, point out one line from the Stormfather, which is like, this is during his whole conversation of like, oh, I screwed up during this whole thing. Like, it's like, that is true. I do not speak in human ways, but still, once you are a dot, dot, dot herald, yep, you'll need to leave everything you know. Oh, so I'm like, uh, huh. I'm wondering if, like, are is he just saying, like, oh, yeah, you're going to become a herald when really, like, no, you're on the path to be a bondsmith. Oh, and, Ga- and Gavilar just assumed it was a herald. Well, that's that's kind of what mm. I was thinking all the way up until the end of the prologue was that, like, you know, yeah. um, he he he. The the Stormfather didn't really explain what being a radiant was, but he was talking about saying the words and mm-hmm. um and uh. Gavilar got on this whole I'm, that means being a herald and the Stormfather's like, sure, yes. um, but yeah that's what that means saying the words but it was only at the end of the the prologue where i realized wait maybe the stormfather actually was on the whole being a, a herald thing like that's something with the oath pact something about how he reacted to the oath pact and i was like oh wait maybe i w- my read of this has been wrong the whole time because i really thought the same thing ian mm-hmm. i think that's really interesting because it would. There's a part of me that really likes the idea that he is like kind of leading Gavilar by the nose into being a bondsmith, but just going and now you're a herald, buddy. Like, don't like <laughs> just listen to me. Like, you don't need yeah, to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like you don't need to know what you don't need to know. Uh, and like you know the it being the words being in the way of kings. I think there's been it's not been talked about a lot, but like the way that the number of parables in the way of kings break down, it seems likely there's probably a parable associated with a lot of the ideals of each order. I think there's like a very similar number. And so Mm -hmm. I assume there's a lot of radiant stuff in there. So maybe he is just pointing him at being a bondsmith. But the fact that he says, like, we have no bond to me also is kind of saying like, well, maybe he doesn't want that. though. Like, is that, Mm -hmm. is he, is he just kind of pointing it out to be mean or like saying that's a good thing. We're not bonded because it isn't working, (laughs) but yeah, I don't know. Crack theory that just came to me. Oh boy. What if the Stormfather isn't trying to get him to be a bondsmith or a herald. What if, like, 
the he's trying to get something new to like okay. fix this whole situation because like obviously like the herald were a failure like yeah they, and the stormfather knows it was a thing. failure yeah so he's trying to like figure like some other solution and he's like oh yeah you're going to be a herald not really it's going to be this new thing whatever that is i have no idea what that would mean it's weird but like yeah there there's very much like and it's like this being pre-alpha even it's just like how much of the things we're picking up on are actually things we should be picking up on like yeah yeah and i don't i just don't think you can just swear the words to be a herald like that's not that's not how that can't be how that works like there needs to be more prerequisites to that surely what i was going to say was just the way it's been described is it seems like they were given their blades and then Ishar created the Oath Pact, and we've never sure. been given any indication that anybody had to say anything in particular to become a party to it sure. thus far. But I will say that it does seem like the Stormfather intends to give Gavilar some level of authority because he's alarmed by the idea that Gavilar would just give in. Yes. And he yes, goes, wait definitely. a minute, this is a mistake. This is not what I want you to do. That, You're the wrong was, person for this. That was really mm. depressing to see just Gavilar. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, no, don't say that to the Stormfather. That's such a bad <laughs> idea. No, don't do that. It seemed like an <laughs> obviously dumb idea. Proud of him. Yeah. He thought Stormfather was going to be proud of this idea. And oh, God. No. <laughs> like, he, he read the Stormfather so wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and he got to the point where he's like, my idea is so good that the storm, the Stormfather will be proud of me. And, and the Stormfather is just like, wow, Gavilar, you're just such an idiot. You have no idea how bad these wars are. You just, you're completely clueless. And, and us knowing the Stormfather as well as we do at this point, like the way this conversation goes is Gavilar's like, I figured it out, guys. I will tell the Stormfather <laughs> that I will take an oath and then break it immediately. That's going to go so well. <laughs> oh, not going directly off that, but going off the whole words thing. Like, the reason, I think the reason why the Stormfather said when Gavilar was like, oh, I want it. And I was like, oh, you're actually kind of close there. It's yeah. not because of the words that Gavilar said. It's all intent. And that's why yep. the Stormfather mm. is just being like, you're, you, you cannot guess them. You could read the entire book and that would not matter. You have to mean them. You have to intend those things. And like the Stormfather actually detected it's like, oh, you do actually want it. I, I got the, in- the intent part you got. Words totally wrong, but at least you have the intent. Part. like i think well, that's, that's the simplest I, thing so yeah. close so far like so yeah, close exactly. is the fact that this is one of the few parts of the entire prologue where gavilar is actually saying what he means yeah um, exactly exactly and like this like right before the herald dies which we'll get into later yes. like oh my god the last stormfather's last line is like it's not about what you are saying that is not what is wrong yeah exactly mm-hmm. it's the yeah. intent, it's I, the intent. Well, and here's what i think is a little you know i'm Hoyd seems to respect the Heralds. I'm sure the Heralds had some good stuff. What is a little (laughs) chilling to me is that the intent displayed in Gavilar's words in my reading is a demand for power. And I'm always like, when someone Mm -hmm. is like, give me power, like give me, there's, there can be, there can be good ways that that can be used and there can be bad ways that that can be used. And it just, I'm always a little suspect of the Heralds. Wasn't Mm -hmm. this scene after... It wasn't immediately after, but I think it was after his uh, little one-on-one with Tarvengian. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where yeah. they were looking yeah. over the map of Rashar and, and Gavilar was thinking, oh, this is the closest I've I felt in months to like feeling this. Like in, in that scene, Gavilar was in a very small way the man that the Stormfather wanted him to be. Mm, like the true. person who looks upon the world and says, I, I want to take upon a mantle of burden and protect that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, he, he doesn't hearken back to this immediately when when he's having the conversation with, later with the Stormfather, but maybe there's an echo of that sentiment in his word. Yes, I want to be a herald so I can fight in this war, so I can preserve my people so they can they can live their lives. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and honesty, I think, has to be a factor to it. Like, I don't think you can lie mm-hmm. about your words. We know no. that you have to mean them. And he, for the very first time, Gavilar says something that he means. Yeah. And yeah. that's got to help. And 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 knowing so that about the Stormfather, that the Stormfather can, I guess, detect intent 
Maybe that's not the best way to phrase that. Probably indicates to me that the Stormfather was suspicious of Gavilar because the Stormfather can sort of feel out those feelers that's like, oh, yeah. if Gavilar is just saying the words, I don't detect the intent. This this guy's not. Mm -mm. And this might be right. a reason why he's why the Stormfather has been lying to Gavilar. Mm -hmm. And he's the one who accepts the ideals, so he is judging <laughs> yeah, other that's radiance. True. That's true. Intense when they say these ideals and going, you're you've got it, Lopin. You don't quite have it. Like we'll come back to you. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Objection, <laughs> you. objection, Your Honor. I, I've been I've been looking for a way to sneak this in. Okay. I don't think he does that. I think he's the messenger. Mm. He speaks on behalf of the honor, probably Tanavast, mm. right? Mm -hmm. I I don't think he has control over over accepting oaths or, or denying them because on multiple that's occasions that's true. he is surprised when that happens. Like when Kaladin swears third ideal, right? Like but I, or, I guess I or one say, of Dalinar's, I think. Sure. I would say the, the way that I would look at that would be he he can he's still detecting that it's true. He just can't deny something that's true. And so he can be like, oh I would like to say that this isn't the case, but I actually know that this is the case and I can't I can't do anything but accept <laughs> words spoken in true faith yes and and yeah. i am i am with you on that one i think he does have some access to mm -hmm. he does he doesn't see into into people's intent probably directly but he he's got a, a black box that when somebody <laughs> says says words he's like is that does that check yeah that checks out okay yeah good mm. these words are accepted <laughs> uh -huh. yeah and, and like i i think I like the idea of like he's just the messenger. It's like same with like cultivation, like with um whole, Venli's whole arc in Rhythm of War, where These it's like I don't think I, yeah, yeah, I don't think either of them are like making the decision to accept or reject oaths. It's just like they know whether or not like that is a valid oath. It, like you, it's, you have reached it, but like they're not deciding whether or not like you're worthy or not. It's just, like it's whether or not like you, your soul is in tune with that ideal like you speak it spoke it with intent it's like if that, like i don't it, think they could like accept an ideal that isn't like they can't force an ideal nor can they like stop a ideal like it is wholly the radiance like onus they're just observers is that the case when dalinar accepts kaladin's ideal is he subject to this compulsion because he seems to be like a pretty free will actor to me where he decides if you're he didn't feel like he had to say it to me, but so given this 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 stuff with maybe Gavilar being a herald, do we think that the Stormfather wants Dalinar to be a herald? What what is what do you think the Stormfather's plan is with Dalinar? That's my question. Um, so I'm gonna go with my third option. Yeah. Which is <laughs> The Stormfather has repeatedly said, like, Dalinar is doing stuff that has never happened before. Ooh. Mm -hmm. it, like, he is, like, becoming, like, the de facto honors heir. Right. Which, like, I think that is probably what, like, is, like, I don't know if that was the Stormfather's plan for Gavilar, but, like, the Stormfather, like, bonding with Dalinar and seeing what Dalinar is doing is, like, okay, that's a good idea. like. I'm going to go with this. Like, sure. Maybe his situation can fix this whole thing. Not to be mistaken with Son of Tanavast, who is a different person. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, I would say just a little corollary to what Ian was saying. There is a mention in the beginning of this prologue how the Stormfather says to Gavilar that things are not going the way they're supposed to as well. So maybe there is. Mm -hmm. That's another parallel between them that you know, Gavilar is doing things he's not really supposed to. I personally think that the Stormfather has a different goal with Dalinar and that mm -hmm. the Herald plan was for what was going on in the past. I'm not 100% sure why he wanted to swap him out, but it's I, I trust that he did for whatever reason. And then by the time that the bond with, and then maybe he has to bond with Dalinar or he has to give him the visions, it's reluctantly. And by the time that he's really in on it, the situation has changed, and a bondsmith is useful for different things now. And the oath pack needs to be handled differently because now Jezreen is dead, and now and you know the and the desolation dead, has dead. begun. And he yeah, needs yeah. 
and we and the oath pact truly is broken brandon has said and so now he needs dalinar to go do something else presumably than what would have worked with gavilar i think for me it's the fact that whatever dalinar is doing as bondsmith did not seem to be planned like he seems to surprise the right. Stormfather with whatever the things he's up to. Um, he's doing such a great job at being a Bondsmith that it's like he's activating some... I don't know. Um, I definitely do think the Stormfather has had the Oath Pact as like a problem that needs to be fixed. He's been trying to work on something. Um, but what that means for Dalinar, I have no idea. I don't... I haven't been leaning the direction of he's going to try and make Dalinar a uh, new Herald or to to reform the oath pact as it was but it's i don't know i feel like things have changed definitely in the stormfather's head since this prologue mm-hmm. the way you just said that um the the my interpretation is like with gavilar the stormfather wanted to fix the existing oath pact i think with dalinar he's finding a solution to like the underlying issue which is the whole odium fused so instead of like fixing the p- patch solution, is like, no, let's actually resolve this forever. Right. The root cause. I, I was in a very similar boat. Um, I, I think at Gavilar's time, the Stormfather recognized the Oath Pact as a problem. And at that time, he thought that elevating someone to a herald might fix the problem. Someone new who's not broken by pain and torture and insanity and things like that skip several years, go to Dalinar, and the Stormfather, it, he may have started in the same place, although I am skeptical, uh, but definitely by the time Rhythm of War rolls around, he's like, okay, yeah, no, this is... The original plan was bad, wasn't going to work. <laughs> um, we are... And, and the circumstances have changed, we are playing it by ear. Like, I think that Dalinar isn't being set up to become... A herald specifically, but more being set up to be able to create more heralds, which may also include Dalinar. Mm-hmm. But I think okay, with him doing new things and the fact that Honor is dead and we don't know what that means for the Oaths and what happens when you get yeah. to the fifth Oath, but I think that Dalinar is being set up to be able to create something whether it's a complete recreation of the Oath Pact or something new, and then he may or may not be a part of it. But I don't think he's being directly set up to just become a herald. Okay. I like and that I, a lot. And I think there's a very interesting parallel going off of what you said between Dalinar and Ishar. Dalinar, mm-hmm. in many ways, is being set up to be kind of the, the Ishar of old, right? Bondsmith mm-hmm. Unchained. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so the things that Ishar did forming the Oath Pact might either be mirrored or at least paralleled by the things that Dalinar is going to do probably in the next book. Uh, whether that be reforging the Oath Pact, breaking it and replacing it with something else. Yeah. I think the thing that I was going to say is like as as I'm sitting here thinking about it further, I'm not even confident that we necessarily that A the Stormfather has a specific goal with Dalinar or B that he has let us in on it because I was thinking that the Stormfather has not pushed Dalinar towards doing much of anything with the Oath Pact beyond right. like he's like, oh, that's the Oath Pact you're seeing. The resetting is a Shard's idea. Yeah. But the Stormfather hasn't done that. He hasn't yeah. said like you've got to do anything heralded yet. And so I'm curious if he's waiting or if he just is like, well, I made a Radiant. Maybe he can help. Yeah, but... it's like it is. What secrets are the is the Stormfather keeping? Because there definitely are some, right? Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's going to come out and I could tell. As soon as the Stormfather's like, oh, the Recreants, mm, I'm not going to say anything. And so there's definitely secrets with the Recreants. All right. So we've talked for over an hour about the Stormfather, which makes sense. because There's a ton to talk about with the Stormfather. But related about Heralds, we have to talk about Jess's favorite part of this. The Herald who died. And I, I think, I mean, we got to talk about chada Devar, the theory <laughs> and i guess we we have to talk about it so you might be the only one who's excited oh this is gonna uh, be no bad. i it's actually am excited but uh so the the theory if you are not aware i believe it's been said on this show probably by ben <laughs> i feel like uh it's I, been mentioned i i, like, I conveyed it because there was a wob 
Yeah, yeah. it started, I think, when we learned that town definitely didn't break at last Jordan Con. Uh, well, it'll be two Jordan Cons ago by the time this comes it, out. But you know what I mean? It, last <laughs> July. Uh, it, it, it's been around for longer than that, but that sure, was, yeah, a, that was a, been a big supporting wob. So the idea is that, one, we don't know where the female heralds are. <laughs> two, like we don't, we don't. Uh, oh, they're out there somewhere. They're, they're out there somewhere. Uh, two, Chana has red hair canonically, and, and and that is brought up in the prologue directly, which is you know interesting. Uh, and so the idea is that Shalon killed her mom, who is Chana. Which, by the way, we also don't know who Shalon's mom is, and that's been a massive secret the whole time for some reason. Don't even know her name. And so Chana went back to Braze and th- gave in, and that's what started the desolation. So Jess, you you heard this theory, uh, especially when the 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 prologue came out, and you you had some reactions, and they were very amusing to me. So I am not a fan of this theory. <laughs> I don't support this theory whatsoever. I I think it I think it's a fine theory for other people. It's just not something that I believe in. Um, and I've always thought of it as like that crack theory that people had <laughs> yeah, about right. Shalon's mom. Yeah. And I'm going to be really upset if like this happens to be true. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, do you just take a crack theory and then it happens to be true? Like, what are the chances of that? But I remember th- I read the prologue and talking in uh, to other staff members and all I see is all these messages say, ah, oh, Chana Devaz confirmed. I'm like, <laughs> did we read the same prologue? <laughs> like, what did you read that confirmed that? We've got, it's saying that she has red hair, which I think we need more than red hair <laughs> to confirm this theory. And also that a herald died. And I just hate the, I hate the coincidence that, Shalon happened to kill her mother the exact same night as Gavilar's feast. Like, yeah, th- I mean, that I is don't so big like how much that lines up. Like that, that frustrates me if that lines up that well. So, Maybe I'm not a <laughs> <laughs> channeling. I'm not fortune. a fan of this. This is not my favorite theory ever. I, I, uh, I, I had the- I really don't want it to be true. Also, Shalon has so many secret societies and magic things already attached to her. Does she really need a herald in her family as well? D- does she need more magic things in her life? Because at the moment, she's like the girl with all the magic baggage of all of the different types. <laughs> yes. I mean, at this point, it's not even baggage. It's like a two full stuffed checked in luggage bags. <laughs> I also, in the past, did not like this theory, <laughs> which like, cause like it did seem like super random and like whatever. Unlike prior to Words of Radiance, there was the theory that Hellerin was the shard bearer that Kaladin killed. And I'm like, oh no, that makes sense. Like they both right. have red hair. Like I'm a, I'm on board with that. And oh, I hated that. It, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> but and like. Like the the day this came out, like I I was listening to the thing, and like I it twigged in my brain. It's like, oh, like another Harold died. That'll be a fun thing to talk about on the podcast. And didn't give it much thought. The following morning, <laughs> I was chatting with a friend, and he made the comment of like how he now supports a theory. And I'm like, and like still not thinking about like what theory is like that the Chana is Shalon's mom. <laughs> and I just sat there staring into space for a good thirty <laughs> seconds, and I'm like. Yeah, I'm totally on board now. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, I am a newly converted Chana Devar fan. <laughs> I too. I also thought it was a crack theory. I really did, and it just seems like the timeline lines up really well. And mm-hmm. when I read it at first, I was like, "Oh shoot!" Like I was like initially, it was initially starting to feel like the ATM retcon for me. <laughs> so I managed, oh, boy. I managed to turn the bus around, and I was like, "You know what?" Like for me. Shalon's past is so weird that it actually makes sense that her mom is something crazy. And like that, like that's why that's what drew all of this attention and created like a situation where the ghost bloods are involved and the skybreakers are involved because that's they're true, circling actually. around this and the spren. 
and the spren, and the in my spren. opinion, okay, could be sure. potentially interested in bonding the child of a herald and being like, can we do this? Is there anything? We-? Like, the cryptics are scholars. So I'm like, you know, there are yeah, ways okay. that this fits well for me. And so I'm actually like, I think this is confirmed. Like, this will be in book five. I, in my opinion, I totally agree. When when I saw Harold died, and it's like, does the timeline work? Uh, we we did have to edit the copper mine because they did previously say the same month, but there was error bars. Okay, that the timeline is an estimate, and so we put a range on Shalot's death <laughs> death range. But it does it does apparently work. But I it's like it. Feasible. One, because I really do want the female heralds to be important. The male heralds have been very important through things, and so I do want them to have mattered in the story. So I kind of like the idea that Shalon's mom was one of the female heralds. Uh, it being Chana is mostly red hair. <laughs> like, it, there, there's not yeah. much else to that, really. It's saying something if the way that the female heralds are being yeah. included in the yeah. story is to just kill them. That, I mean, that says something. You're not Patch wrong. Bridge, Chana. You're not wrong, but at least they're not like off somewhere else in the world, not being yeah, relevant. I, I, like I, I do I would, get that I would though. Prefer if they were off somewhere and doing their okay. own thing for them to come. But also, right. death isn't a permanent thing just yet for her. She's got to come yeah. back. Yeah, she yeah. still, she still exists. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's what I'm anticipating. Is I'm like, okay, Shalon can have a conversation with her mother. Like that's something that we have that, <laughs> that probably has never existed. And like, God, it is probably going to be pretty, pretty. Co- I, I do want well, to know how she married Lynn. Yeah, like, what, like, that, what, that, there's what a lot of the questions in that sense. Bar? That you were like, I gotta marry this guy. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. And if, if it's Eddie, Harold, like, why are you marrying me? Like, I need another redhead. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. That is weird. But uh, what, one other thing is that the first line of Shalon's, uh, Shalon's first flashback is like referencing the world ending with like her mom dying. And Shalon was to oh, blame. Yeah. And Shalon was to blame, which mm. like. That feels like one. Oh, see, you you forgot is that, that Brandon being yeah, I think no, it Brandon is. No, literally, 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 yeah, Brandon has said there's a huge foreshadowing hidden in the in the first two books. Yeah, that uh, could be that. Yeah, 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 yeah. could be it. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't like that as being the big re- like that doesn't feel like a big enough reveal to me. But, I wanna, but, I wanna, but it's I wanna, like honor is dead us. in the in the chapter title. It's like oh, it's pretty good, mm-hmm. pretty good. I, mean, I want to take us back from from Crazy Town. Okay, we've, we've been no. hanging out too much in Crazy Town. I love Town. it here. No, I, I it looks like you do. Yes, so <laughs> I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna lend my support to Jess in this a little bit. <laughs> in that excellent. Uh, I also always believed this was a crackpot theory. Uh, I don't believe this is true at the moment. Mm. But I will acknowledge that the the amount of evidence, some of which very circumstantial over the years, has allowed this crack theory to graduate to a normal theory. <laughs> okay, fair fair point. That's, yes, yes, indeed. Yeah, that, I, that I just don't believe in. No, yeah. that's fair. And I don't think that it's confirmed, like, if you don't agree with this, that you are indisputably wrong. That was no. mostly... That was hyperbole, but like yeah. I do think it's a it is if you can say it in like I think there's some pretty good evidence there. I mean, mm-hmm. a- again, I don't think it has to be Chana. Like it, it could be several of the female heralds, really. Other it than the red hair, be, but it is. <laughs> uh, so just to to get my myself in here, yeah. Um, I I kind of am withholding reserving judgment until I see how it plays. Um, I am kind of annoyed about like how the female Herald problem. Um, yeah. But, yeah. you know, it's sort of like if this is signaling that she's going to come back, you know, I'm just like, okay, show me a female Herald. Just show me a female Herald, that, please. That was where I was um, at, yeah. You know, so it's sort of like I want to see how it plays uh, if, this is, if this is how it's going to be. It's like I didn't like it as a meme, but it's like, if it's gonna happen, then all right, I'll just we'll see how it goes. And it's let's hope it's good. Don't be bad. Yeah, I will give a point against Shauna being Shalon's oh, mother. Okay, which is Hoyd gave Yasna portraits of all of the heralds. Right. I feel like Shalon would recognize her mother. Like I feel like she knows what that face looks like. And the fact, so it's like, what is less likely? She doesn't recognize her mother or like 
she was never shown those harem portraits. I was like, like I, either one of those like seems plausible to me. I feel like she might have not seen them. Like, you know, yeah, it's like not like putting wanted posters up. Like, have you seen this woman? <laughs> you know, like yeah, like, but she, it's like she could have, but I don't think she must have seen the, the yeah. It, it's just like it, it's just a. Th- I'm still in the support of the theory. It's just like, uh-huh. why didn't Yasna show? Like, why wouldn't she show it to her ward? Have you met Yasna? Maybe, maybe <laughs> Yasna knows. Maybe Yasna knows. And Yasna's like, I'm not going to show. Sh- that would be great. Can you? Oh, here, here's that. my pitch. No, 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 no. no. Yasna, no here's, Yasna, my Yasna pitch. here's my pitch. Here's my pitch. Okay. Shalon comes to Yasna in book five, and she's like, Yasna, I've been working with the Ghost Brothers, the group that tried to kill you. And Yasna's like, Shalon, I knew your mother was a herald. We both. <laughs> treated each other incredibly poorly <laughs> let's bury the hatchet we, we both carried secrets <laughs> yeah <laughs> but like yasna did know stuff about shalon's mother i feel like i feel like that gets mentioned she was well informed about her stepmother certainly she's like oh yeah, yeah. 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 yeah 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 oh the stepmother okay yeah yeah no. oh man i i hadn't really thought about already. yasna and knowing this but we also got to fit an unmaid in shalon's past there's a lot <laughs> that we need to get to in shalon's past mm-hmm. in this book and so a herald is like even more weight of crap to get through here so like yeah getting getting the continuity of the of the stormlight 5 prologue is trivial compared, compared to, Shalon. to, to shalon's <laughs> past yeah good point uh, mm-hmm. I, I do want to want to take us back. So so we we've stepped away from Crazy Town. Now I want to take oh. us back to a point where Crazy Town is in the distance, right? Okay. But but it's still visible. It's Brand walkable us. though. We could get there. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Walking shades. We, we're we're there in a day. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Um. So so let's assume for a moment that the herald who died was not Chana. Okay. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about who else could it be? Uh, because I think I th- do you do you mean in this case? Not Shalon's mom. Cor- correct. Not yes. So okay. there's Just, a there's oh, a okay. herald who dies in the prologue of SA five. Who could that be? Okay. All right. Cool. This this is a good thing to think about. Uh, so we're not just you know rolling down um, a path that is potentially untrue. That's yeah. true. Uh, obviously, it's not yeah. it's not Kalak or Nail, right? Right. Because we mm-hmm. get him there. It's not. It's probably not Jezrian. Um, it's yeah. possible that he died and he came back and he was still a beggar, but that seems incredibly unlikely. Yeah. Also, we see him, or Zet sees him, like, 10 that minutes night. before. Yeah, he didn't yeah. come back and become a beggar in the Kolinar Palace a second time after. <laughs> like, <laughs> with, 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 within hours, by the way. Yeah. Um, uh, pro- probably not Shalash, right? Yeah. She uh, was there. Yeah. Yeah. Batar, Payalia. And Vettel. Mm-hmm. And Vettel. And Vettel, we just don't know anything about, and right? Uh, At least well, one of them is probably in... in Mm-hmm. I was gonna say in Teravangian, in Cabron. <laughs> in Teravangian. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. It, it's, it's, pr- pr- they would also be in Kolinar on that night. <laughs> Vera was a surgeon. She knows about these things. Um, I I find the idea of Ishar having died an interesting one. Oh, that is all, actually all, an interesting one. All yeah. of this was a prelude to me to me mm-hmm. getting getting to Ishar. Yeah, because like he wasn't Tezim before then. Like Tezim's a fairly I, recent development. And, and that's the thing I don't remember. I don't remember when Tezim, Ooh. the gut priest of Tukar, became a factor. Ooh. And so I, I wonder I wonder if after. if Ishar was just living his best life. Maybe maybe he was mm-hmm. a prostitute in somewhere. Okay. No one even knows what that reference is referring yeah. to. Yeah, you just yeah keep circling back to that. <laughs> um, but, I'll put but a card if died. you want to watch the episode about that. You, you don't, don't, don't watch that episode. Um, it's a good episode. It's a good episode. Anyway, so so may, maybe he's living the best life, and he dies, therefore no longer living his best life. Uh, he goes back to Braze, immediately gets tortured and whatever, and he's like, I'm not about this at all. Comes back. And and that signals like a change in the way he thinks about things. Like may- maybe that's the thing that, that that breaks the camel's back, right? I don't think that timeline works out. I don't either. Because it's like the point where the, whatever Harold it is breaks is the end of words of not words of way, way of kings when Tall shows up. Like that's what t- allows Tall to return. And Tezum's been around longer than the the couple of months since Tom's return. Does that need to be true, though? 
I think that I think that makes sense to me though that the Herald yeah. gets killed is sent back manages to make it for a few years okay. on Braze like mm-hmm. they used to they used to it used to be like a decade between or even less like less than a year I suppose so they do a little better make it six years and then they get they get caught mm-hmm. break immediately Talon goes back they okay. go back yeah. okay that yeah makes that makes sense. sense that makes sense. yeah because it's like I don't think like the fused wouldn't expect a Herald to randomly die after four and a half thousand years so it's like probably skated by on is like nobody looking for her <laughs> that's for a, a couple that's, of that's years fair. and then like found like tortured yeah broke yeah yeah which allowed tong to return it is a little weird though that it's a herald mm-hmm. who abandoned the oath pact in some way who died and i'm curious if that messes with anything either that it's somebody who has kind of given up mm. a little bit and maybe that open no that doesn't make sense i keep trying mm-hmm. yeah the timeline is interesting you're trying to make it so it could be Talon? Because I don't think that... No, yeah, I don't think no. it could be Talon. I was trying to think of maybe, oh, a herald who kind of quit, goes back. The Oath Pact is weakened but not broken, and that lets some Spren sneak through. But Ulam is already through by then, so that can't be related. Mm. I, I think that's just gems that yeah. help them get across. With ever storm moving off the barrier storm from Braze. Good thing we haven't recorded our Herald Desolation episode, because at least we have this <laughs> prologue to go off of, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. procrastination yeah well look we were gonna record it that week weekend after fun. march 1st and that uh well we had other things to record then yeah uh it does look like the 80s war happened around at least the copper mind which i'm pretty sure you wrote the 80s war article david so i trust you completely uh, that it was around 1167 so uh, the 80s war ha- had been going on for six years as of the events of Words of Radiance. We don't know at what point Tezum became prominent, if he was there yeah. from the beginning, if he yeah. wasn't, but that's a date that we know. Yeah, yeah. But I, I do like the idea that like Ishar knew like a herald died. Ooh. Mm. And like that's what prompted him to become Tezum. Ooh, I, that, like, I like. the that I like for sure. Because like that timeline that works out. That totally works out, I think. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, now's the time for me to start doing things again, mm-hmm. as opposed to just getting nail cryptic things. They must, they? Have felt they must yeah, have felt it. Yeah, they have it. to have felt it. I just, if I the Stormfather could worried, sense it. No, no, no. You know? well, mm-hmm. Okay, no, it's not necessary. I, I was going to say that, oh, uh, they, they don't know that Tone is the only one, or Kalag doesn't know that the only one, that Tone is mm-hmm. the only one who died last time, mm-hmm. but... Uh, I completely buy the argument that, yeah, they were literally in the middle of a battle. So, like, yeah, they probably couldn't feel some blips in their connections. Mm-hmm. I must say, I really like this idea of Ishar as, like, feeling the Herald dying, and then that motivated him to be tested. goes, oh, that's, that's nice. Or at like least that. figuring out that a Herald has died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And if some... If anybody's going to have a more intuitive sense of what's going on, like it will be Ishar. Like, yeah. I believe yeah, that yeah, if anybody yeah. if anybody could feel another Herald die, it would be him. Yeah. As opposed to like Ash, who's like, I don't know about realmatic theory or whatever that is. <laughs> yeah, right, so, right. Like, I haven't I cultivated smash things. things. Yeah. Or at yeah. Like, the very least, like the Heralds were at least some of them in contact with one another. It's like it, like, it has to be a female Herald at it, this it point. It does like, have to be a female Herald. Um, that, that much, so like, I think, has to be true. If it's not yeah, a shark, like, yeah figure out that she died through like mundane means Mm. so how about friends we talk about something completely different in this freaking thydekar shows up and i i just want to before we get into it i just want to say that i love clock's line of oh the man can't he can't deal with someone else having more secrets Uh, it's like oh it's so good it's so 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 good freaking it's, uh, it's a it's a great line that that tells us that kelsier is i mean obviously yes we see him on on the show. see his app but so many quotation marks right yeah yeah yeah. um but the fact that a herald from roshar knows kelsier well enough that's true you understand that his secrets are kind of his <laughs> thing like yeah it, mm-hmm. Yes, Kelsier hasn't left Skadriel, but he he's definitely playing on a wider scale with yes, this point. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I, I freaked out when it's like, oh, Kelsier's there! He's the Seon in the trench coat! Brandon did it! He wasn't sure in our in our interview, but he did it. I like yes. that Brandon made that not look 
dumb. Yeah, well. that, that helps I remember too. Yeah, hearing yeah. that. I was like, that is the dumbest thing. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. He actually made it work. Like, it didn't come across as silly, yeah. which I appreciate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's doing some, like, Darth Sidious stuff with, like, the hood over as, like, Cavalar. That's my Kelsey impression. <laughs> I do. Another, another thing that I love is Kelsier clearly, I, like, we, we are in, in Gavilar's POV, yeah. but Kelsier clearly controls the situation. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> like, he, he, he shows up, and, and yeah, he's got his theatrics and stuff like that, <laughs> and, and Gavilar is, is tr- like, he's, he's talking to him, he's like, oh, well, uh, I, I think you need me, and, think, and Kelsier's just like, dude, I am, I am still <laughs> tired of your <laughs> just Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> just, just okay. Just and and he's and it's such an exasperated like he takes off his suit. He's like, look, you, look you don't it. know what you're doing. You're playing a game. You don't even know the rules or the players. Just, just take care, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's good. Friendly advice. It, yeah. It's more kindness than he necessarily needs to offer Gavilar. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> a good point. It's more than he deserves. <laughs> yes. Too. Yeah. One thing I love about this is I don't think the illusion dropping was part of the plan. I think Kelsier mistimed that whole conversation and that he was supposed to just like vanish. I don't think I don't think Galadar was meant to see like the Sion like shrink down and leave. I because I, I think like obviously like there's some sort of illusion laid over top of the CEO to like yeah which is a, I, I have another quibble on how like CEO talking <laughs> far talk happens um okay. oh, I but like actually. <laughs> I don't think like it I don't think it was supposed to end when it ended I think it was supposed to continue on past that so it's just like when he just like oh like oh there's a random like sphere with an arcane glyph in the middle I'm just like I don't think you were supposed to see that which is hilarious to me <laughs> Okay, that is actually pretty funny. <laughs> I, I think that's a funny read. My impression of it was kind of the alternative where it's like Kelsier is doing like a shock and awe thing here and he's like mm-hmm. showing Gavilar something that he has just no idea how to interpret. Yeah, so that's like, fair. What is this glowing ball? What is this rune? What just happened? You and have, I think it also, you're such an idiot, Gavilar. You have no yeah, idea. And, and I think like people are like, oh, why did Kelsier keep his face like glowing blue instead of, you know, making it mm-hmm. look like normal, like the cloak does and everything. And I'm like, well, maybe he's like, this dude's going to see me. I'm going to have a blue face. And he's going to go, what the hell is that? <laughs> you know, like anything that he can do to just kind of throw Put Gavilar off. off balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? See, like that's gets into my quibble on this because in Elantris, when like two Sion's like, like two people are talking through two Sion's like, the Sion like shifts into the f- head of like the person on the other end, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I don't think the color changes. I think you still see yeah. like a holographic, yeah, yeah that was image. always my impression. Well, I always thought like it was made out of the color of this Sion, but so like when it goes to it's like my interpretation, like the light weaving illusion magic ends, and it's just the this. Sion sphere talking it's like like those should Kelsier's face should still be there I think in my opinion oh yeah uh, I, okay, I thought fair. it should have held the shape of his face until the words ended I think that's a minor like Sion oh yeah sure sure sure, sure 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 yeah, yeah. minor doesn't care about potentially will change Elantra or, sequels are going to be real fun for Brandon to write <laughs> plus he can also just have the Sion like drop the face illusion and and go back to its old shape like it, the, the Sion changes its shape to to mimic the person speaking for a better user experience not because they have to i don't know if necessarily we know that yeah but it, that could Ooh, be and possible. it's like it's th- there is more illusion happening because like it, i think it's just like the head or like yeah head and shoulder it's not like a full figure with like dynamic cloak movement. yeah 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 i think the like, cloak is all some sort of illusion i think mm-hmm. uh and that it vanishes i i am, is, just i am really happy that that actually sounded really cool and not completely it, dumb <laughs> like because that was yeah. true yeah yeah like it, it was so cool and i was like oh it's Kelsey. oh shit. Uh, i want to talk about uh one of the things that Kelsier says mm-hmm. uh and he's talking about Kalak here. 
Resteras. Mm -hmm. uh, deliver him to my agents, then we'll give you what you said that you wanted. A return of the ancient days you've hungered for. A chance for the powers to come back. Later, Kavalar's asking Resteras, why does he want you? And what Resteras says is, I know where she is hidden. Resteras whispered, where her soul is. Ba Edo Mishram, grantor of forms, their other god, the one who could rival him, which is weirdly capitalized. I don't even, the capitalization is crazy in this. So I don't, I don't know. The one we betrayed. So I'm almost wondering, like, what is Kelsey are thinking of getting Kalak to try and bring the powers back? Because I feel like there's an implication that Kelsey does want Ba to Mishram to do something related to that? I don't know. I don't it, think so. It's I think he's weird. conning Gavilar. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah. he's an easy con. <laughs> for oh, Kelsey well, he, or, yeah. he could be conning him. That's an yeah, excellent that's point. That's a good point. I, I think he's just like, hey, give me Rastaras, and I will give you oh, whatever you want. You sure. want you want the Voidbringers back? Sure. You want money? Sure. You want immortality? <laughs> sure. Yeah, I got it. Just just give me Rastaras. Okay, fair, but fair. He's He's not saying, oh, when I get Restaurants, I'll do this. He's claiming to have already put things in motion. There was an implication of that as well, which is very yeah, interesting. Yeah, there, there is a line. Let's yeah. see if I can. And, no, I, I agree. And, and that, I believe, is separate from the entire Baro Mishram line mm -hmm. of yes, stuff. Like, that's true. He's, it is. The, 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 uh, the ghost bloods have been doing or must have, must have been doing things on Thydekar's behalf to like yes. accelerate the return, whether they've been providing the yes. sons of honor with information or like spheres or yes. light or spren whatever axendweth is a yes. terrace woman world hopper yes if, uh, if if she was a member of the ghost bloods which like that's very much up for debate like she was Upper involved allegiance. with like pushing venley towards certain yeah with the spren yeah. with Ulam. yes that's so, possible and it's um, interesting because we know that gara outed this outed accident Gary. and she fled the palace gary the ferocious right, right and yep, uh -huh. we don't know who he works for even oh, still God. but i could easily see yeah. him being like hey guess what gavilar there's an agent there's a thydekar agent in your staff right now spying on you like watching what you're doing and gavilar's like oh like get her out of here and that's why she was expunged from and, the palace and there's a reference that accent with this conniving here uh mm -hmm. yep. i i have the quote by the way where Thydekar says, you can't grow beyond the tide, Gavilar. You swim with it or get swept away. The things we've started are in motion. And to be honest, I don't know that we did that much. I think that tide yeah. was coming, whatever we did. Fascinating mm -hmm. line there. <laughs> to me, that speaks to a, num like a, a number of different factions all kind of working towards the same thing, right? The fused want to come back, and they've got plans, and the Void Spren have plans. And and they're moving the, the Ever Storm. Storm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, five different parties are all working towards the same thing, and one of them is the Ghost Bloods. Going back to, like, Viserys' comment about, like, oh, the reason he wants me is, like, I know where Bade Udo Mishram is, which I don't necessarily think needs to be the case. Like, like we've talked about, like, why... Um, Thydekar Kelsier wants Visteris many times on this podcast. But crack theory, Ba Edo Mishram like became a god and connected to a wide spectrum of people. Yep. Some people think the unmade were people before they were unmade. Right. Which is kind of like a cognitive shadow. Maybe Kelsier literally wants to become a god. I mean, yeah. that does I that's don't, in character. I am not in support of this theory. It it occurred to me, I'm like, it would not surprise me at this point. I mean, I, I'm still baffled why the ghost bloods want Biodimishram. Like, I I don't really quite understand why. And like Shalon says at the end of, you know, Rhythm of War, it's like, why do you guys want someone that can connect to the entire species? Because Kelser does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It definitely seems to me like like he he wants uh Calic for like both to learn about what happens with cognitive shadows and not have that happen mm -hmm. and yeah, to right. get this bottom Ishram yeah. information. 
And there, the a boring answer is that she can provide void light. And Kelsier is like, I'm going to be able to take void light off world. And I got this friend that makes void light. I oh, just oh wow, yeah, that is the most boring money answer, fountain. isn't it? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's That's not. True. Whoa, this is going to change the world. Well, it will, yeah. but it's not as exciting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because he does want the investiture stuff. Yeah, what do we think Gavilar and Kelsier did? Because you know what we didn't get any reference. Well, there is a potential reference to the anti light, but. No explanation to Gavilar getting that anti-light uh, sphere other yeah. than a line that he says to Amram is like, we totally have a weapon against the Voidbringers, which I assumed was the uh, anti-light. Uh, yeah, it definitely seemed to be to me. I, I agree. Yeah. Are we thinking that like Gavilar and Kelsey, are they worked to get the void light and move the void light? Because that, that seems to be the implication I got because... Nail was super surprised that he had Void Light, right? Uh, and Kalak didn't seem thrilled, in a way, so right? He seemed excited, I thought, because he's like, "This could be a way out for this us." This could Nail, be a way. A weapon, yeah, against the, the Void Bringers. There, there's at least two things going on here that I that I think are are different enough to be important. One of them is uh, that line that we've seen in a previous prologue where. Um, uh, Kalak's like, or or maybe Gavilar's like, uh, oh, we we managed to move the thing between worlds. Yeah. Uh, that proves that the connection is not severed. Right. Even a few short years ago, this was not possible. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so there is a very clear goal there of we are trying to get void light from Braze or or probably the the barrier storm. Probably the barrier Braze. storm. Sure. Um, but we're trying to get the Void Light from Braze back to Roshar. Yeah. Uh, that, in Kalak's eyes, proves that investiture that is connected to either planet can be made to leave either planet. Mm -hmm. Which is his goal. He wants to leave. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Sure. So that is, that is one half of this entire conversation. Uh -huh. The other half is... Gavilar sees all of that as a means to creating a weapon to either permanently defeat the Voidbringers, the Fuse, or put them under his control. Oh. Presumably by threatening to destroy them. Yeah, I guess I feel like he's talk when he's talking about putting the Voidbringers under his control, I think he's talking about anti-Void Light. I think that's the line. I agree. Yes. Yeah, I don't I, think I agree that's related that. to the box that they have and, constructed. Well, so uh, the way the way I think all of these pieces fit together is uh, Kalak and the Sons of Honor want Gavilar to prove that he can get Void Light from over there to over here, or maybe mm -hmm. vice versa, or whatever. Sure. That is that is the extent of their involvement in all of that. From this point on, Gavilar, either by himself or with Thydekar, or with someone else that he's working with. We do have a reference from Aesodon about an ancient friend that he's been in communication with. And Aesodon's mentioned specifically mm. uh, in this yeah. as well. Um, but so the, the Void Light stuff starts and ends with Kalak and the Sons of Honor. And then the anti -void, Void Light stuff is, I think, Gavilar's and maybe someone else's building on top of that as, okay, this, the Void Light furthers. The Sons of Honor's plans, the anti-void light furthers my plans. It seemed to me that Kalak knew about the anti-void light. And he was kind of saying to Nail, like, look, we've got the anti-void, like, you know, we've got a weapon. That was my impression. That really that didn't seem entirely new to him. So like he he's pulled out he's pulled out the void spheres, you know. Yep. Nail looks and he's he goes, You are a fool, Restar as Restar's his friend said, a terrible fool of a man charging towards a high storm with a stick, thinking to fight it. What have you done? Where did you get void light? Uh huh. Gavilar smiled. It is set into motion. All of it. He looked at he looked to Ristars. The project was a success. Oh. The man perked up. It it did? Is that? He looked to his friend. This could work, Nail. We could bring them back, then destroy them. Oh. It could work. Okay, Cal yeah, no, no. You're totally right. I, I think that's exactly talking about void light. Okay, all right. Yes. I, I missed that, even though I just reread it. Uh interesting and, and that's the thing that makes me skeptical that the ghost bloods are involved because Kalik knows about this and he wouldn't be he's like hey 
Gavilar, who's running your crazy Shade Smart network to Braze to bring back Voidlight? And he's like, oh, don't worry about it, Calic. It's just the enemies that want to kidnap you. Like, it seems to me like Calic would know that sort of detail. Maybe Gavilar was able to hide it, but... It's like there's a whole project to do this anti-void light. Uh, mm-hmm. Whereas, so maybe the... Well, I mean, we... he said, mm-hmm. I have more good news. These experiments are working, all of them. We can mm-hmm. move void light from the storm here. I assume that means there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Move it between here and damnation yep. as you've wanted. Yep. Yeah, so that does say that they're getting the void light from the storm. Yeah, yeah so it almost seems like there are the two projects. There's moving it around, and then there is the, the anti-void light. Void light thing. Plus, you need you need to get the void light to get the anti-void yeah, light. Yeah, yeah, right? you do need that. Mm-hmm. That is an important portion. Oh, God, this prologue is so troll in that we know so much, and yet we still don't know how Gavilar got the anti-light. Yeah. That's got to be answered in this book, though, right? Surely. Yes. Yeah. Well, I feel like it. Be. Hopefully. I, I, feel I mean, like- Rizaris theoretically knows. Like and oh, that's Salon a good point. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. We just we just ask him. He's on our side. We got a friendly <laughs> yeah, he, Harold. Yeah, he better be so forthcoming. <laughs> he is like a reticent person who is like, oh, I'm only gonna drop plot roll information like as it becomes catastrophically necessary. <laughs> uh, Stormfather, like they need to get in there and ask this guy some questions. He's yeah. psychologically compelled to just barf plot and info lore. dump info dump kalak give me the info you can even be the one that reveals shallan's mother is chana <laughs> yeah she just like does a light weaving of her family and he goes like oh hey why is shana in your family portrait <laughs> yeah they'll be your right in there with, next to badamishram uh mm-hmm. turns out badamishram was under the devara state the whole time <laughs> that's actually possible I mean, that is very that possible. is actually possible. <laughs> that is unfortunately very plausible. <laughs> I mean. Oh, it's so fascinating. I I do love how much Gavilar has like been trying to balance all these knives, Adam. Like mm-hmm. I, that was really fun to watch. Also, that he's stupid uh, about it. Like I, I like that too. But then mm-hmm. just the entire ending when he's like. Oh, Thydekar betrayed. It's like, I mean, it makes sense that you would expect Thydekar. Kind of makes sense that you thought Rastera is because you're kind of conning him too, really. Uh, mm-hmm. And then, ah, uh, it's just so good that Cavalar at the very end was just talking to the Stormfather and never Zeth the entire time. I love it. Mm-hmm. It's so good. I do have a question about the ending. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because I I actually don't have an opinion on this, which okay. listeners, if you know me, I me not having an opinion on something. I, it is it, shocking. It is it's, shocking. It's a, a precious it's a precious gem. Um mm. what Gavilar says as he's dying is uh he mm. assumes that Thydekar is the one who got the assassin to yep. him. And his words are tell Thydekar he's too late. Yeah, ooh, that is interesting, isn't yep. it? it? The obvious question is, late for what? Like, what has Gavilar set in motion that he... So, so first of all, he can be delusional, dying, whatever, right? <laughs> True. That's, mm-hmm. that's the boring explanation. We don't do boring explanations on this show. No. no so, don't. what has Gavilar set in motion that he thinks is relevant to Thydekar's interests? And that apparently cannot be stopped, at least in, in Gavilar's opinion. As far as he knows, Thydekar is interested in getting Rastaris back. Or not yeah. back, but just getting getting a hold of him. Yeah, and right. I think that's the only thing that he knows about Thydekar. Yeah, but yeah. how, how well, much he... did Gavilar and Thydekar coordinate is, is like super open question. So it's really mm-hmm. hard to dig into well, this. Yeah, and he knows he knows what Kalak told him that that he wants Kalak because Kalak knows where Bada Mishram is, and yeah. so like in in the prior to the fact that apparently Gavilar didn't really understand until this prologue, I would have said, "Oh, he he knows something about Bada Mishram. He's done something. He knows Kelsey has an interest in that." But it doesn't seem like he had any significance attached to her. Yeah, and like the Anti Light Project presumably died with Gavilar. Like, it, it, I mean, it's unclear who he collaborated with with the project and experiments about the anti-light, right? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, 
Okay, I do have one little piece of evidence, though, that I do think is worth discussing about who else might be involved. Oh, is great. I think that Arta Fabrian, who is at the party, oh, yeah. Rooster Chris, Chris yeah. is potentially someone who's tied in. And Agreed. there is a moment where uh, Aesodon is in the garden. She's talking to Rooster Chris. Yeah. Oh, right. Aesodon is actually to, talking. Yeah. Yeah, and she's yeah. trying to get out of the conversation. And Navani is desperately trying to get into the conversation. <laughs> right. And As, uh, as are we. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so this is where the line comes in, and Aesodon calls him a boar, and it goes, Boar, Navani said, twisting the gaze of her shoulder. He was talking about gemstones and other gemstones and spren and boxes of spren. And she goes on, and we know that this device that they've built is some sort of aluminum box, which seems too simple, but... It does seem too simple. But so I so think he's tied in. You, you say all of this, and 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 this engages a part of me that is really upset by this prologue, uh -huh. because the way I read it, and in fact, why don't I why don't I get the quote? Uh, so the, the way I read it, so we are about halfway through into into the prologue. Um, Gavilar is wondering, hey, why would this person need Baru Mishram? Mm -hmm. uh, and the Stormfather tells him about the the Parshman and the Parshendi and that connection, mm -hmm. uh, and. Gavilar strolls to the bookcase where one of the new heating fabrials had been delivered to him by the scholar Rushur Chris just earlier today. Mm -hmm. There is no connection in that passage that implies to me that because he's got he's already done the whole thing with spilling the the gems yeah, that yeah, are behind yeah. Eric's head yeah. onto the table. <laughs> yes, <laughs> all all of these, right? All these. Um, and, and so the way this reads to me is. Rooster Chris was in here to deliver like cutting edge science to Gavilar, not to deliver top secret project to Gavilar. Right, sure, sure, I, sure, sure. I can definitely see that. I think, Just and I think it's a little awkwardly me. written. Like, if if that's the case, you're kind of like, oh, he his most notable thought is he brought the heating paper reels. Not that he brought <laughs> yeah, the right, 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 right. Yeah. Reel. Yeah. But I do think it's. It could also be read as, oh, Brandon is pointing. Oh, he's met with this guy. Like, we, he invited him specifically True. to the party. We know that's the case. He's met with him already today. And just to me, it seems like a lot of threads that could be tying in there. I have no idea what Gavilar could have set in motion about Thydekar, though. Like, I, I'm just clueless. I don't either. Or that yeah, Thydekar like, that wouldn't like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's dead, like, man. There's and part I, of me that's just like, Gavilar is saying that to make Thydekar think something about <laughs> ten motion and like very in character. Yeah. To yeah, like it could be a taunt. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Usually a taunt though has like something that like could plausibly be true. Like, you know, I'm sure like I feel like <laughs> you'd be like, you'll never stop what I started, Thydekar, and Thydekar's like, what? Did you start? And then nothing happens start. and he's like, Well, I guess I hope yeah. you enjoyed that. Yeah, I mean, like, the storm's coming. I already acknowledge that like, the storm's coming. What are you going to do about that it? That could be terrifying. It's like, okay, it's like, this guy said he set something in motion. It's like, I'm not finding it. What is that thing? Right. Like, how bad is it that but, I can't find any trace of it? Kelsier doesn't even A buy. reasonable person would be like, no, he was just lying to me. Paranoid person. Kelsier's kind of paranoid. It might, it could set Kelsier off into, like, spirals of, like, trying to figure out what the secret is maybe but, but there's like, actually no secret kelsier also it. It has read gavilar correctly and that he's yeah. kind mm -hmm. of an idiot so like i don't know yeah. if kelsier would be intimidated but like i could see gavilar thinking, thinking that would yeah right yes yeah because he's an idiot so we talked about kalak saying that uh they betrayed bottomation but not what that meant but there's another line that the storm father says about this that is and then she fell. She was too small a being, not strong enough to uphold an entire people. It all came crashing down. And so some brave men and women, Radiance, did something that had to be done, trapping Mishram in a gemstone to prevent her from destroying all of Roshar. The side effect of that event created the parchment. Woo! That is a paragraph right there. Whoa! <laughs> Yes, it does hint at some things that we got in Rhythm of War. Yes. Because it's like, it, it gets mentioned that like, Ba'edo Mishram's capture and sealing, like, 
changed everything. Yes. Like, all people connected to Roshar. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which, yes. like... Yes. Is, like... But, like, she was only connected to the singers. Like, what does that really mean? It's, like, Back to the her ceiling also allowed, like, um, dead eyes yeah. to start happening. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. So, like, this, that, like... Something about that whole process of her connecting to the... Like, was fundamentally screwing something up on Roshar. And we still don't know what, but, like, now it explains some of those, like, more ESO, like, diverse consequences. It, it's, it's interesting the way this is ordered, and obviously, like, things can change in continuity, so I don't know how... But the implication with this paragraph is things all came crashing down, and then the Radiance went there. And, I mean, we already yeah. know that the Heralds were there, and, and we know in this that the Heralds betrayed Mishram. Uh, I, I was kind of uh, telling Jess uh, a bit ago that maybe the heralds were like gently nudging the radiance to do that strike team. Like yeah. they knew something was mm -hmm. wrong, and so they were like putting a few things in motion to get the radiance and Malishi to go do that strike mm -hmm. team. But I'm just wondering what could have gone wrong there, because there's nothing in the gemstone archive that indicates that like things are all crashing down. It was just like. She's a threat. We're going to neutralize this threat. We're going to end the desolations for good, right? I wonder if by connecting to all of the singers, um, she started hurting them somehow. And like that's part of what the downfall was because she's trying to grant them forms. And in my brain, that leads to either the forms she's granting aren't working or she's actually hurting and or killing them by trying to do this thing and that's part of the problem hmm. as you were speaking i was reminded of elantris yeah so so this is a magical effect something something goes wrong and instead of the intended effect which is these radiance powerful radiant powerful beings okay. um <laughs> all right I, I i said radiance um you you get these like decrepit zombies and stuff like that. So I I, I wonder if if something similar was happening here. Bino Lantrian is a form. Yeah. Okay. So here's my here's my alternative. Just like trying to figure out a way that they're conceivably betraying Mishram, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's another aspect. This is, this is yeah. pretty out there. I don't think this is necessarily the case. Uh. So this is around the time of the false desolation. It's yep. been two thousand years or so since yeah. like. Mm -hmm the fuse have done anything of any significance yeah, right, right right and i've always been kind of interested in this time period too because like the singers weren't destroyed or anything so like they're still kind of out there they're still kind of living with the humans in something resembling like not total war i have to assume you know right. and i wonder if mishram is like maybe like things like like things start to shift like the war is like long over maybe mishram isn't the worst being in the world and they're kind of like yeah like maybe we'll let mishram connect with some of the singers and give them some powers like they are kind of they are being like cast down the radiance are trying to kind of like seek a higher ideal and be like you know maybe we can work with these guys oh and it doesn't it doesn't go well and mishram connecting is dangerous something happens it's bad maybe and maybe things got out of hand and like the false desolation really kicks off and they're like no no like this is not at all what we wanted to have happen like we were just trying we didn't mean for you to fight us we were just like oh, you can have some power like oh, you can get your forms changed by this person which maybe some, maybe they couldn't do that so easily without mishram I, I, and then I had things an got bad oh. and they had to betray her and trap her even though they'd originally kind of been okay with it and maybe helped her i i had an idea but it doesn't work but that mm -hmm. the heralds were talking with mishram and uh and maybe ashar helped mishram connect to the singers but that doesn't work with the honor blades so i don't think well, that does work or malishi like maybe a bondsmith helped her do what she began to do you know whatever that it was to allow insane. her to connect to rishar yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I don't know if I buy that. That I mean, see, yeah. it might be too. Maybe the skybreakers were like, "This is wrong. This is wrong," and they're fighting with the windrunners, and the windrunners well, are like, true. "No, this is a good it's, idea. Like, we, we're time. protecting them too." Yeah, I, I, yeah. I had a, a somewhat similar idea, mm -hmm. uh, where I thought that Mishram may have actually not been an unmade <laughs> prior to all of this. Ooh, sure. Okay. And like maybe she was so for a very long time in the fandom, a lot of people have believed 
very reasonably so, I think, that Mishram was some kind of spren on a similar caliber to the Stormfather. Sure. Whether she was the spren of Roshar, the spren of spren, something, something like very significant. And so I wonder if that was the case a little before uh, the Recreants. And then for whatever reason, she decides to connect with all of the singers and give them forms of power. And the act of like channeling all of that void light, uh, or maybe not even void light, maybe just Odium's investiture, pure investiture or whatever, uh, through her, changes her and then changes. There, or, or maybe it changes the singer and that changes her or whatever. And she can't stop the process. Like she's opened the floodgates. Oh, okay. And now sure. all of this investiture is running rampant and she, there's nothing she can do to stop it. Okay. The vast amount overwhelms her. So in, in, in Rhythm of War, when Rabonio is unmaking the sibling, we are told that's what she's doing. From the outside perspective, it appears that what she's doing is she's pumping a lot of void light into, into the sure, sibling. right. And so there is room here for, oh, maybe a key component to unmaking an entity is to flood it with void light. Or flood it with different investiture mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. Sure, sure. You, you are... This is going to be a bit of a tension, but Kelsier is a cognitive shadow that is made uh, largely, if not entirely, of preservation's investiture. What happens to Kelsier if you replace that preservation okay, investiture with ruin? Fair point. Mm -hmm. So, un unmaking maybe maybe just that. Sure. Right? And so, yeah. to circle all the way back to Baru Mishram, maybe like she opened these floodgates and and she's got all of these like hundreds of thousands of tendrils of channels reaching out and connecting to all of the singers, and they are directing the flow of void light. But the void light is too much for her, and that changes her from within. That unmakes her. And her goals are no longer her own. Her goals become odious. So g going off that, Evgeny, I do not think this is where Badamishram is be becoming an unmade. I don't mm -hmm. think that works at all. Mm -hmm. uh, I think she was unmade long before during the desolations. Uh, I don't think that, like, I that's possible. But what I do like is I do like the idea that potentially, like, there was some void light chain reaction thing. Like, that I find is possible. Mm -hmm. Um and uh and like too much void light in the system or something that that's like causing effects that we might not know uh so mm. that i find plausible i do not find it plausible that she was unmade at that point you know maybe maybe bottom Ishram wasn't unmade at that moment but maybe bottom Ishram was an ally and they and you know odium's gone the bond yeah. is it, they've been unmade but they used to be an ally they used to be a sprint of rashar sure they're not directly that's directly controlled by Odium because we know that like Sianat sleeps when Odium is confined during a desolation and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So they they have a little more free agency and are like, hey, like you know me, we use like I am still in some ways the spren that you knew before I was unmade. Let's cut a deal and then okay, and then they kind of start channeling a bunch of warlord and they're like, uh oh, like this is kind of <laughs> like Odium's back again. Uh uh, uh there goes I my some of my free will. Mm. Yeah, I'm still very skeptical of the whole like the unmade being other things not odium spread before mm. they became the unmade i'm yeah. like that the whole no. thing i like i don't i don't know but i do want to kind of explain like why the timeline doesn't work okay is that it doesn't make sense for her to become an unmade at the end of everything it's like because because yeah. there are records of like she was a high prince of the um void bringers is like of like ancient history oh but she wasn't except for like this one tiny patch of time at the end of everything yeah yeah i don't think that works though well, that that comes from mythica right yes yeah i mean there there is room for Mythica getting the High Princess of the Voidbringers wrong because they're just conflating the Voidbringers in the False Desolation. So that that is possible. Yes. Uh, but I agree that I, I do not think this is where Badamishim was unmade. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, I don't think Milishi helped 
Bada Misham connect to the singers. I don't think the Radiants knew about it. Like in the Gemstone Archive, they're surprised that Bada Misham yeah. was able to connect with all the singers. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay, you're I, right. Yeah. So I think Harold's would, I mean, Malisha wouldn't have to say necessarily. So I suppose there's something there, but yeah. I, I feel like he would. <laughs> Maybe he went rogue. Maybe Malishi is like one man unity machine, and he's like, "This is how we're gonna really <laughs> one unite." One man them. unity like... <laughs> machine. That's a great name for a band, by the way. One man unity there you go. machine. So anyway, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really excited to get some Bodhimishram answers. What was? Because I, I imagine we're going to get what Bodhimishram was, what her relationship was to the Heralds, because there's yeah. clearly some relationship. Um, and what was she doing at the False Desolation? Recreance answers. That's this book right here. Hell yeah. yeah. We thought I'm... we got it in Oathbringer. We were so, we were <laughs> like, here's our answers. And I was like, Bottomy Shroom. I am so answer. excited for this entire Recreance Bottomy Shroom timeline to like, yeah, not only be revealed, but like work out well. I'm this still is... kind of worried. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean yeah there's that but like I am probably more interested in that than I am in the outcome of the content uh, content contest of champions. Ooh. Fascinating. I mean I am okay. I don't know if I'm that Maybe yeah. they'll tie together cuz I mean he yeah, yeah. lots yeah. get tied together. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. That's what good books do. They make Bo things flow. Mishram Bottom was champion. the champion the whole time. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know if that works. Oh, <laughs> Shanna as Odium's champion. Because like, she together. was on Braves for a while. She got turned. Yeah. And it's like, so Shalon, I am your mother. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. She's just there for the contest on the sidelines. And mm -hmm. she's like, is that? That my, my mom? mom? <laughs> <laughs> that, I, I don't think any of that's true. Uh, New I, trauma. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she's working through all of her old, old, old stuff. Like she needs some new trauma to work through. <laughs> my, my last oath is I'm. I killed you before. I'm killing you again. Fifth ideal. Nice. That's my, that's my secret data, Lynn. I'm always traumatized. Oh no. Oh boy. Uh, I think there's one other big topic that we haven't gotten into, and it's the Gavilar Teravangian scene. I don't know if there's that much to go into there, but I thought. That was a very interesting conversation. Yes. That's fascinating. I, besides the interesting characterization stuff that was happening, what was interesting to me was like, oh, this is what it looks like in world when one of those epigraphs resolves. Like yeah. it's like, mm -hmm. oh my God, like it's a literal thing that happened. He quotes it from memory, and it's like, I know that this thing happening between us, this conversation happening between us right now is what that uh death rattle meant and i was like oh cool like, i know it I was know. so literal it was so in front we're talking on top of the world and you he says this thing and like they're right in front of a map of the the world and i was like it's oh. so <laughs> i don't even fully so get that till just now that's awesome oh yeah i was like oh my god wait what yeah sorry, it's which like death a rattle is this it's the well, one, the one that's in the chapter. It's coming no, it's, through the, as Teravangian as is they standing talk. there. Yeah. Yeah. Let me let me find the quote. Just so oh, I, I totally think this. you're right, Shannon. That's a hundred. Yeah, 100%. like we're on top of the world. I was like, so that was so exciting. Uh, oh. I really want to find this. Uh, Sorry, I'm, I, I, no, I'm confused. I I I'm here. I'll I'll, I'll get into it. Um. Okay. I, f I so, found it. If you. Yeah, I, I I just found it. Okay, so the quote that this de death rattle is, okay. Teravangian is explaining this to Gavilar because Gavilar says, like, these the of a storm, the something, the night of sorrows is coming. And Teravangian, like, goes white. And he's like, yep. what? Where did you hear those words? Yep. And Gavilar's like, you oh. wouldn't believe me if I told you. And Teravangian's like, no, like, this death rattle, my mother said. Yeah. I stand before him above the world itself, and he speaks the truth. The desolation is near, the everstorm, the night of sorrows. That was her death rattle. Yep. I stand before him. That's Teravangian. Him is Gavilar. Above the world itself, they are literally standing like a, a, a collection of kings over this map yep. of Roshar, this giant map of Roshar, and he speaks the truth. And then Gavilar says those three phrases. Huh. And and Teravangian in oh, that moment okay. is like, this is that death rattle that just came true. Yep. Huh. Yeah. 
Interesting. Wow. I, so that's what did not pick up on that. No, me I either. I completely overlooked the first yeah. half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like that's fascinating to me because like I was one hundred percent where Gray was. It's like oh, it's like it's a death rattle. Like of Ooh. course, like it's, a, it's <laughs> yeah. explaining. We're seeing oh, how oh, a death wow. rattle resolves. Yeah, that's really <laughs> like, cool. So much of the death rattle stuff is like semi poetic nonsense that I kind of sometimes <laughs> throw out like half of it, and I'm like, well, I don't know what that means, but he, yeah. someone's gonna. Oh, okay. The message is, the desolation comes. <laughs> Sorry, I was like oh, searching awesome. the death rattle list for World and Stan. I was like, I, I didn't get this. Oh, it's oh, no, literally no, the no, one that is right here. Okay, yeah. right. Yeah. Interesting. And and I can totally imagine with this whole thing that mm -hmm. this is, I totally get why Teravangian went to cultivation for the capacity. Yeah. And I totally mm -hmm. get why he's super interested in the death rattles here. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like this is... A, oh, that is such a good point that this that this starts him harvesting the death rattles. I bet, but like that's like the death rattles think, aren't just crazy BS. Like yeah, there's something is, there. This is truth. Yeah, and, but mm -hmm. if you think about it, this sends him off like a shot on the path to become odium, and you just have <laughs> yeah. to wonder how much oh, is cult like you know is, did cultivation see this moment? You know, like how much does she know? It's just so Seriously. interesting to me. It's a turning point for yeah. Caravangian. But it also, is, like the death rattles come from an unmade. Yeah. Which Nergal's not is it Nergal? No. No, it's Moloch. It's Moloch. Moloch. Moloch isn't one of the intelligent ones. So no. it's not like Moloch set this all into <laughs> that, no. That'd be okay. Coordinator has some crazy revelations when we get to talk mm, to Moloch that's true. or something. No, I'm, I don't believe that, by the way. I, I do I am excited to learn more <laughs> yes. in Horn Eater though. Yes. Hopefully yep. the spread is still there. I'm dreading that Hopefully. like, like oh, I will Moloch be left last Tuesday. And I want no more Moloch death rattles. I've wanted it for ages. Moloch, this would be a great Moloch book left. for more death rattles. Moloch left to get a pack of cigarettes and he just hasn't been back. Yeah. He's in Shadesmar. Mm -hmm. um, I, there, there is two things. One of them related to what we've been talking about and one of them not. It is very interesting to me that the way Teravengian's mother's death rattle yeah. was conveyed to him yeah. was mm -hmm. from the point of view of Teravengian. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, I stand before him. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. And so what I think is happening is she must she must be seeing some kind of a vision in, mm -hmm. the, in probably the same way or similar way to how Dalinar like sees himself in mm -hmm. in visions, right? Sure. And and he can narrate those visions to to people who are back in the real world. Um and there's probably like connection stuff and fortune stuff, right? Like these mm -hmm. things Related. come together to to mm -hmm. make this happen. Um but it is interesting to like look at death rattles we have through this new lens yeah and see if that changes anything that is interesting uh, well some of them are it's, i think pretty clearly from kaladin's point of view yeah like, I the don't, kaladin yeah. ones are very like i stand above you know i stand in the, the void, void. Like, the, Spinning, i drink creeping. the feast like yeah, it's yeah, yeah. kaladin yeah, so. I don't think this is telling us anything new that we didn't already yeah, know. It is just uh, really cool, it is though. New to me. Yeah. Yeah, it's sort of um, like the idea that they could be seeing it from the point of view of like, that's that's a new idea to me. It's like, oh, my God, like, what if someone is like literally seen through Kaladin's eyes without knowing they are Kaladin like that? Mm -hmm, yeah. You know, like that. But it, mm -hmm. this is the best crystallization of that though mm -hmm. right yeah here, which is yeah. fascinating I, yeah. I certainly I, hadn't internalized no that idea no 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 mm -hmm. i definitely didn't either uh and it and it's consistent with i guess other visions right when when renarin has visions he's talking about like seeing himself be slain by yasna's blade sure sure and sure, things sure. like that Al yeah, although yeah, yeah. his are weird because he like sees a, a, a stained glass, glass. Yeah. he's not yeah. seen so in like a a a, a hollow deck, he just yeah. watches TV. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Which might be Fasc interesting. Fascinating. <laughs> all the, it's aesthetic. That's all it is. It's really cool looking, and that's what yeah, that's probably. why it's that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like the parallel between Taravangian talking to Gavilar and Taravangian talking to Dalinar. Just how oh, he comes in <laughs> <laughs> stolen. Ha ha. <laughs> Uh, he just comes in with these philosophical ideas and like he doesn't open a conversation. He just starts with them and it throws them off guard. Yeah. And it happens <laughs> to both of them. <laughs> That's yeah. true. That's true. Ah, oh, Teravangian's so great. Like, 
I, so I, I guess I can I can build on top of that without having feel like the idea was entirely stolen. <laughs> um, <laughs> What I what I found interesting about their conversation is that it echoes a lot of kind of the sentiment that we see from Caravangian in later slash previous books, later in the timeline, but previous because they were published previously. Right. <laughs> where a lot of his conversations with Dalinar are about like the burden of yes, kingship. Absolutely. And a king has to make the hard choices and has to make the sacrifices and the things way like. of and so, kings. This is this is exactly that. Hey, do you do you ever think about these people that we are ostensibly doing this thing for and stuff like that? So it, it's it, it's nice to see this consistent characterization of Terravangian. Like that didn't change with him with a diagram and cultivation. Like that that's that's just always been Terravangian and fascinated with this yeah. idea. It's just mm -hmm. with the diagram, it's ramped up. Like he does have the capacity to do crazy things, and that yeah. is like. I should. It, I should do that. You know. That's I also different. think well, yeah. it. It like it, it. I think it's so interesting how it provokes different. We can get the read on what kind of person Gavilar is, because like we've seen Dalinar's reaction to this kind of yeah. being yeah. challenged, or yeah. like here's a here's a reason to doubt your place or to doubt what you're doing and what you're thinking. And Gavilar's like it pushes Gavilar into certainty. Um, and mm. like, so it t mm. totally different. I, it's like, it's such good characterization so of good. like, because we've had so many conversations between Taravangian and Dalinar, um, this, I think this reveals kind of a lot about, uh, his, his character. And, and it, it makes me just so excited that he's freaking Odium. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, it's going to be so good. It's going to be so good. And, and I, Caravangium I, was going to save them all. Yeah, he was. I, oh. I think it was the right call. I'm very. I was at the the moment it happened. I was unsure, but I I'm very excited to see Terravangian continue. Gonna be so mm -hmm. cool. Final thoughts about the prologue. We've been going a while. We're back to big ass episodes. Uh, none of these shorter <laughs> weekly ones. <laughs> the Secret Project Four ones weren't. But you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that's popped into my head over the course of this episode is there's like some comment about the Stormfather being injured during the recreants, even though he wasn't bonded to anyone at the time. I'm like, oh. what's that? Has that to do with any of like the suspicious stuff? I'm like, I don't know. Well, I mean, how much was the Stormfather even privy to these things before Honor died? Like Honor died changed the Stormfather mm -hmm. a lot. So it's it's. Big open I, questions, you know? I I would like to present the jury with Baru Mishram yes. as evidence. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, she affected all Her, spring. Yeah, oh, I guess that's, that's true. true. Yes, yes. That's, I think that's, that's a very good is. point. That, 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 that's, mm -hmm. that's the easiest yeah. thing. That said, my point still stands. It is weird how much the Stormfather remembers before Honor died. Honor that had is, to die after weird. the Because he, he's a liar. He's, he's a dirty, rotten liar. Because <laughs> the Stormfather is a dirty, knows. rotten liar. Yep. Yeah, which is interesting because like he took over creating the honor spread, and honor spread really don't like lion. That is true. Yeah, we we didn't really talk about the the notion, and I think that this was a reason why people felt that the like it can't be the stormfather. It's like because the stormfather lying was such a big deal. Uh, mm -hmm. We we didn't really touch on that specifically. Um, we 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 couldn't touch on many things. There, there's um, so, there's so many lines. Mm -hmm. uh, I I know we yeah. didn't forget. Oh, it's just we tried to hit the the big highlights here. Mm -hmm. um, I think at the end of the day, like we know, some spren can lie. Like that has always been the case, and true. we just have never had a a guarantee that the Stormfather was one of those spren. Yeah, or was not. So yeah, I don't think it's specifically against honor to do lies of omission, and the Stormfather has done that all the time. Like even from what we've seen of Dalnar, he he. He omits things all the time to Dalinar, yeah. specifically. I, I, I think it's complicated. It um, is complicated. I think honor would compel, like the intent of honor would compel people in Spren to speak the truth if they are in kind of a binding contract where they are expected to speak the truth, right? That I agree with, mm -hmm. for sure, yeah. 
but it's about um, like the agreements rather than truth necessarily i think yeah I, yeah i haven't i haven't reread um the stormlight books in uh in the last year or so so it's but i mean even in my memory uh the stormfather is not a like a coherent being like you know we can tell that like there's weird mishmash of weird stuff going on mm -hmm. with him and you know and it's like it's not like like the the idea that he's lying or doing something new or different we haven't seen before isn't isn't shocking he's he's full of like mysteries and weird pockets of like why are you the way that you are we don't know it's sort of like he feel it feels broken he feels sort of like a few pieces of different like things put like put together into one and he's trying to make himself a, co a cohesive being but he's not and it's uh i think there's all kinds of weird pockets of he'll act one way in one scenario and then the next he's kind of like drawing on a different source or a different piece of himself sure mm -hmm. yeah interesting like the thing i want to bring up is that like sill really hates lying yes. and like and it's described yes. as like an honor spren thing yeah to be really against lying true. that is true and it's like the honor spren like think they are the closest to honor so it's like i think it's natural to Yes. Into it that like honor was very against lying. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. More That's so than just like, oh, as like, if you swear to tell the truth, you have yeah. to tell the truth. But like, other than that, I don't care. It's like, yeah. I don't think that honor okay. That's honor at all. It's That's like, fair. honor That's does not like lying. Well, <laughs> Tana Vast as honor did not like lying. You're, you're, you're totally right there, Ian. It, I wonder how much of the Stormfather's lies are just, wow, Gavilar's a sketchy dude, you know? And it's like, mm. Mm, he's real sketchy. Like, I feel like that is a factor that, like, mm -hmm. if... So I, I feel like there is some wiggle room when the person you're talking to is obviously sketchy. And yeah. deceiving it's, you. Yeah, himself. and deceiving you, right? So... It, 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 I think it's also important to, to note that the Stormfather is not an other sprint. Right? It's true, yeah. Uh, he was the rider of storms before he was anything else. And so how mm. much of him is honor and how much of him is Tanavast and how much of him is the infused of the by honor's yeah. investiture and things like that? Like, we don't know. Yeah. And like, I think that's like part of the explanation for like why like he does end up lying. Like he, he is an honor spread explicitly, but he was being set up as a successor by honor going so far as like he's the one that took over creating new honor spread yeah 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 yeah. that mm -hmm. like it doesn't strain credulity that lying would be a no-no for him so like right. the fact that he does lie is interesting and a big deal it absolutely mm -hmm. is a big deal for sure mm -hmm. and i totally get that read that's like i didn't think the uh, that the Stormfather would do that totally makes mm -hmm. sense other final thoughts things I'm really excited for the book. I'm, yeah, same. <laughs> so excited. Like, one, I want to know. I was good <laughs> until the prologue hit. I'm like, oh, I really want the book. <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah. this is torture. I'm really cruelty to fans, Brandon. <laughs> dropping this early. So early. I know. It kind of is, just, though. Just the, the first, the first hit, but it's not the first. It's like, whatever. Especially because we've yeah. been so hyped for this prologue for so long, right? Like, oh, yeah. the Gavilar mm. prologue is going to be crazy. And it's like, yeah, it, yeah, mm -hmm. yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, as soon as we got Words of Radiance and we knew like, oh, this is also the Night of Gavilar's for Death. It's like, fifth book is going to be Gavilar. We want that. Yeah. 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 So um, one one thing that we didn't talk much about and we haven't talked much about in in many years actually okay i feel like is and i bring this up because this is something i would like resolved in stormlight 5 mm -hmm. nail is very convinced that mm -hmm. all of these things that are happening are bad mm-hmm uh, and and this is something that comes up in this prologue again in in brand new content, and I I want to know more about that. Uh, mm -hmm. How much of, how much of his, of this is his particular insanity? How much of this is transferring of void light and spren between worlds? Like why why is that bad? And how much of this is Ishar feeding him bullcrap? That's that's a good question. I think 
that for my final thoughts, one thing that I, I really want to know still is why Gavilar? Like, why was Gavilar the person who this all happened to? What was, like, you know, he's prominent, he's a king. There are probably several reasons, but I'm interested in why Gavilar became this person for the Stormfather. Yeah. I wonder if it has to do with, like, Stormfather's final words, like, when he's dying there. He's like, but I thought your family... Dot, dot, dot. Oh yeah, there hmm. is something about that. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Like maybe... that's an excellent point. <sighs> yeah, I I do I think I have an explanation for that. Mm. From a very long time ago, there was a word of Brandon about how like why do all of like why are all like the radiants showing up in the same place? And it's that like historically, Alethkar Alethella was a place where a lot of radiants were. So it's like, that's where the ra- this friend started looking. Mm-hmm. And because the Colons are the royal family of Alethkar, it's like, and they're, like, Gavilar obviously was suitable-ish to become a Bondsmith. <sighs> that, like, it's... Kingly. Ki- yeah. That, like, it's not a matter of, like, it could have been any family. It's not like they have an ancestor... So, mm-hmm. like, divine right of kings, whatever. It's just, like, they're in the focus. And so it's, like, that's where P- friends started looking first. Sort of. I, f- I feel like maybe the Stormfather could also be, like, sensing some connection to the future that there is someone special in the Colon family. Like, that. that's very plausible. Yeah. Or, like, that's, that there's... That's unfortunate, yeah. There's, but then there's that de- there's that death battle from that Potter that was having visions during the high well, storm that's true. several years. <laughs> that's true. And well, I don't know. You know. He doesn't seem that important, you know. Well, yeah. You know. He might be. He might be a distant Colin cousin. Sure. He could be distant Colin. Yeah. Um, well, I was. Know. I was gonna say that it may have something to do with the idea of unity, like unite them. And he united um, Lathkar. Yeah. He and did he unite. Okay. Like he was. Yes, he was a conqueror, mm. but he was a very efficient conqueror, and. Mm-hmm. In in the process of thinking about that, it got me wondering about the old, the old Sunmaker. Oh yeah, mm. and the visions he had, mm-hmm. and a, a very old theory. Yes, mm-hmm. ancient days. And, and so there might be a through line in terms of authority. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, unification. I- I have one more thought. Kalak mm-hmm. uh, Gavilar says that uh, the Sons of Honor are Kalak's most recent incarnation of his organization mm-hmm. previous incarnations got to be the invisitors right 100 percent. oh yeah 100 percent. Uh-huh. That, that's and, totally confirmed at this stage and something we didn't touch on that i thought was interesting is that it seems like the reason kalak is is made the sons of honor in these organizations is it seems like he feels bad for inadvertently ending the radiance yeah during whatever happened yeah. with Bob yeah and yeah, yeah and is trying to in some way be like oh maybe we can make radiance again and i was like i told you that's a bad idea <laughs> Yeah, don't, yeah, no, that's, don't that's do that. And he's like, but I thought it would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's basically I, I, it. Yeah. I also have like one other Kellak related okay. fun fun thing. Okay. Is that Gavilar knew that like Risteris was pretending to be a herald and he's like, well, obviously that's ridiculous. It's Risteris. And like, no, dude, like he's literally it's a herald. Really funny. Like, come on. It's, like, it, that was so like, funny. <laughs> It's just like, oh, it, you're so wrong, Gavilar. It's really cute. It gives me so much pleasure that there were no fewer than four heralds in his <laughs> palace on that night. And he's just like, I, the mm-hmm. heralds are gone. They're not in there. Uh, yeah. And so for me, final thoughts. Um, nothing mechanical or romantic or any of that. Um, but I just was, it, it keeps striking me over and over again. Like, Dalinar respected Gavilar so much and he didn't deserve no. any of it you know all like the little things like he was thinking about like oh my brother was so like good and mysterious and like why did he tell me about like what did he see what did he know um you know like oh he told me about the codes that night what what, what was what was it he, what was he thinking and you know all like those little things of like we're we're given to see gavilar as this a figure of like he knew it was going on if only we had his wisdom back and all of that <laughs> and we see him and he's so dumb he doesn't know anything and he didn't deserve any of the love or respect he had and he had it he was like he didn't des- i'm so mad at him he didn't deserve what he had and oh my god it keeps hitting me over and over again like how terrible he was the, the emotional uh, torture he put dalinar through from that short <sighs> conversation 
mind blowing. Oh, yeah, it's criminal. The sheer, the sheer sense of like vindication that I am consistently getting from Shannon throughout this episode is just giving me life. It's good, <laughs> Brandon. I, in his first drafts, I'm sure Brandon was just like, I want to nail Gavilar's <laughs> character, and he so nailed it. It was so good. The continuity yeah. stuff. Oh, you know, anyway, that'll, yeah, that'll no matter change. like what revisions, like what revisions happen or what else has changed, like the part I like best about the prologue is gonna this it was the main point of the prologue. He mm-hmm. sucks. He's it's dumb. Like, oh, He's you're like, trying to be <laughs> immortal. That's so cute that you're going to die tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Adorable. Yeah, that's me on Great. the prologue. <laughs> Let's head on over to Who's That Cosmere Character? This character is from Roshar. Menace. Tia Tom. Braze. Void in drag on a horse. <laughs> it's time for Who's That Cosmere Character? Call. All right, everyone, welcome to Who's That Cosmere Character, the game show where you send five clues and a character to WTCC at 17 shardcom uh, And I read these clues aloud, and these guys have a chance to guess who's that Cosmere Character. All right, so this first one is sent from Lightwing8888, and clue one, this character is Blunt. Blunt. Badger. <laughs> it's not what? Or I was on. like, well, we gotta try. Yeah. I'm gonna guess Gavilar because it's topical to the episode. <laughs> it's not Gavilar. And Shannon, oh, you guessed uh, Vasher? Yeah. yeah. It's not Vasher. About Dan. It's not, it's not Denth. It's not Nail. But, clue two, this character is highly invested. <laughs> so, you know, good guesses for that. You know? <laughs> Maybe, no. Mm, highly Dalinar. It's not Dalinar. We already did nail. Mm-hmm. Is it pattern when they make his blade dull? <laughs> no. Is it lift? Oh, sorry, lift. no, Wendell. Wendell, not lift. It's not Wendell. Yes. Two guesses. Gotcha, Eric. No. Ah, okay. Well, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, well, he's the one. He go. He turns into a pole. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, mm-hmm. A baton. Yeah, like a baton, like a rod. So it's blunt, not sharp. Blunt instrument. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> not a sharp, I, not a sharp blade. I was baffled. Yeah, it's not like hurting people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had a guess and I, a guess and I forgot it. Oh, that's unfortunate. Because we were talking about Windle. Yeah, as you do. Our vacuum. We named our robot <laughs> vacuum Windle. Yeah. It's really cute. cute. Nerds. Uh, uh, did anyone guess Chris? No one has. I didn't guessed think she Chris. was highly invested. Is, is that? Is I, that I I will guess Chris. It's not Chris. I'll go Kelsier. It's not Kelsier. Clue three, which will exclude Chris immediately, uh, is <laughs> this character is honest car. but not intelligent. The Storm Father. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the Storm Father. Is it old chaps from Warbreaker? <laughs> <laughs> it's not old chaps. <laughs> highly invested. He oh. held my blood when he stabs himself. Real invested. <laughs> I I I think that is the literal opposite of being invested. <laughs> it's de-vested. like one of like the three returned that are playing Terrachin. Like <laughs> Light Song like comments on like oh like being returned doesn't like increase mental capacity. Oh, which that's that might be not specific enough <laughs> i don't remember any yeah, of this if it, three. If it is, one of them, i don't think that's specific enough it's one of them weather love i can't remember that might be weather, weather love, love. Hmm. i don't think mercy star plays with them no i don't remember no it's also a guy the yeah, mercy star is female right wasn't there a blue yeah. someone is not it blue there's a blue guy there's a green guy it's not marsh and- <laughs> They're just going on about the territory. It's like, no, it's not Marsh. I don't, I don't know enough about... I haven't re- reread Heartbreaker. I mean, meanwhile, like 80% of the fandom doesn't know what Terrachin is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Right. It's the game Light Song plays. It's well, the, the fact that it's sort of like, degrees. I have to agree that this person is not intelligent. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. It's like... It, it, I'm so frustrated that I haven't started my Warbreaker, Warbreaker reread. reread. Which is like coming up. 
Yeah. They're rude. Hmm. I'll skip. I would like a few more clues, and it might be this return Ian is thinking of anyway. Mm. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to skip because, like, I know it's one of the three. I don't remember any of their names. Yeah. Uh, the next clue is this character wants to invade a neighboring country over the disputed oh. breaking of a Yeah, it's one of the three returned. <laughs> yeah, like, that's what it is. Uh, Let's give Ian one third of a point and move yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, and and, and I, 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 I I will do that. It is one of them, and Evgeny also gets a third of a point because the character Before does blue. wear blue, and that is one of the things. <laughs> so, so I'll, I'll give you a third of a point too. Uh, and clue five was this character's doesn't get light song sense of humor, and this is life blesser. Uh, there you go. I'm never gonna remember that. <laughs> no, no, was that the Her- a herald name? No, it's life brother. That's the life, life brother. brother. Yeah, life. we don't even no. know if they're a herald. They're yeah. just a maybe, shin god. Maybe probably. we'll get some no. shin of our info and learn about the life brother. Nah. Look, maybe maybe the life brother is actually Mishram, but lore has twisted the idea of of who that person is. Yeah, mm. probably. All right. All right. This next one is sent by Evie, not the one down our kilt. Uh, you, hopefully. Oh um, God, I was worried about that. Yeah. <laughs> Kalua? Are you going to get a new evolution in Scarlet and Violet? Ooh, that's, that's my a, big that's question. question. Five, five clues question. coming to you straight from the beyond. Yeah. <laughs> Clue one: This character is a member of the ruling class. The Avalon ruler. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Okay, one at a time, please. <laughs> Gavilar. It's not Gavilar. Kaladin. Uh, not Kaladin. Jess? Uh, Adeline. It's not Adeline. Not going to say it. <laughs> um, Did I hear a Lord Ruler somewhere? I tried to guess the Lord Ruler. I'm because sorry, he's you all guessed the at the ruling. same time. No, no, no. no I'm, not, I'm not upset. I'm just... Is that your guess? For... Yes. It's not the Lord Ruler. Okay. Um. Oh my God! There are so many when you say ruling class. <laughs> That's uh, a lot of them in the class. Here. It's an entire class of people. It's an entire class of people. Yeah. It's a ruling class. Yeah. I'm like, do I want to go Stormlight? Yeah. Uh, I'll say Teravangian. It's not Teravangian. All right. Clue two. This character is a conqueror. The Sunmaker. It's not the Sunmaker. Alendi. It is Lindy. Oh. Ooh, nice! You were so close, up, Genny, But sorry, it was it was the yeah. No, sorry about that. Uh. I <laughs> I I contest this submission. Uh-huh. Lindy was a filthy peasant, but he who came by the cr- ruling class. Yeah, he did. If you he was a, a ruler, king... he's part of the ruling class. Yes, I that's, think he that's married how it works. Her so, that's well, how okay. it works. Okay. I will I will ignore all of your reasoning and counter it with my own because I did guess the Lord Ruler who was also a filthy peasant. So Yeah, there you go. Great. So good talk. Uh clue three, this character is dead. Clue three, this character is an Alomancer. Ooh, I like that one. Uh nice. very clever. And uh this character saw the Mist Spirit. It's like, oh cute. I like it. Very Mr. nice. Mr. Nice. Uh and then we're gonna go to our Who's that Cosmere character priority queue, which you can send by being a herald on Patreon, which is $10. And you can, if you don't want to do that, you can support our Patreon for as little as a dollar, which is pretty mm-hmm. sweet. You can vote on art, like art like this in the background. <laughs> we commissioned it. Gavilar cool didn't know how easy it was to become a herald. Right. If you don't even need the Stormfather. You, you just need 10 bucks and support our yeah. Patreon. Yeah, easy. You, you, can, you just need... You immortality need not guaranteed. The seventeenth shard. Yeah, immortality not guaranteed, but you know you can give us money. All right, this <laughs> one is sent by John Carlfelt, and this is a what's that Cosmere location? Uh, and uh, who he sent one before, and that was one where I was like, ooh, shattered planes and uh, like Narok, and so. Basically, if there's something like that and you say shattered planes and it's too broad, I'm just gonna say no. So there you okay. go. Like, so if you if you say sell and it's some location on sale, that is not gonna be sufficient. I'm just gonna automatically yeah. just say no. Okay. Fair. All right. Clue one. This location. 
was the site of an important confrontation. I can't Luthadel. guess the Cosmere. <laughs> it is not Luthadel. How about the place where the heralds abandoned their blades, wherever that may be? Ah, uh, it's not that place. <laughs> I, I, I assume this submission came with like the name of the location, and so if if we don't know the name of the place, then we like we can't get we we can't guess. Oh, this unnamed place where something happened. <laughs> it does have a name. I I'm happy to yeah. confirm the location okay. has a name, and oh, it is guessable. Well, that changes everything. Well, too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember um, which of these two cities is the capital city of the place I want to talk about. I will mm. guess the Kondra homeland. It's not the Kondra homeland. Teo- Teoras, which is the capital city of Teod, oh. where like the final climax of Elintris happened. Oh, it is not Teoras. I was thinking of that place. I didn't know what it was called. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to I, I, I don't know if it's off. Teoras or Teoin. <laughs> Yeah, because that. It, yeah, I think it's Teoras. Oh, I think that. I think that changed. I think it. it I think it. Oh, no. There were two names in the original, but it is uh, Teros. But if it, I would accept both of them, if that was what it was, it's not okay. Teros. I know what you mean. The I'll just go for Warbreaker because that's on the brain now, and whatever his Susurbron's palace in Hollandry. Uh, it the is city's not, city. It is not the God King's palace. Uh, I wanted to be specific. Yeah, no, no that, that's palace. that's fair. That's fair. Uh, to this location is easily recognized from a distance. So it's probably Ur-thiru. not. Some... It's not Urethiru. Colonar. It's not Colonar. This is only the second clue, right? This is only the second clue. That's correct. Okay. Oh, actually, I don't think that has a name. Ooh, Ooh rip. What was the first clue again? Like the what the fr- exact phrasing? This location was the site of an important confrontation. Mm. Got to get your notepad out. Write it down when he says. Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah that, we're that's never work. gonna do that. <laughs> Rosemary's not okay. here. Yes, uh, yes, Jess. It it might not actually have a name, but it also might. So I'm gonna guess it anyway. Okay. The vision Dalinar goes to where there's the black castle and then all the radiants come and feverstone keep feverstone there we go feverstone keep it's Wait, not feverstone keep or feverstone okay. keep though because those are two different things yeah though there's the, the one black the one is in the is in the pure lake mm-hmm. that one okay. doesn't get in yeah oh but yeah the one that might might be a uh... i'm thinking okay. of the one in the vision okay. they're both in the vision <laughs> well it's, okay. different. it's a different vision uh <laughs> but it um, is not the black castle Silence Montaigne's way stop because there is a fight there. It's not Silence Montaigne's way. Stop. I, I, it's not important, but no. it's a confrontation. Uh, I I don't think this is the correct guess, but I think it's a very interesting guess. So I'm gonna go with uh, the wound in the spiritual realm <laughs> in the Threnodite system. Ah, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Was that everyone, okay. Shannon? Yep. Okay. Three. I, actually, I've written down six, actually. <laughs> okay. There, so. okay. <laughs> uh, clue three, this location is not in the Rosharan system. Oh, oh, that's good. Okay. Big clue. Big clue. There's it a, big a lot. Clue. You can't just eerie rear it. What is the name of the place where Shy was in all of the Emperors? Um, just, what does it have a name? It's the castle. Um, it does have a name. Does the castle have a name, or do we just know the the city? It's the imperial seat, or something like yeah. that. The imperial know. seat of whatever. Uh, are you saying Rose. the castle, or are you saying the imperial seat? Because those are two different uh, guesses. Are they two different guesses? They're not the same thing. Okay. Well, the one's um, a city, and one's a castle. So okay, I'll do. I'll go for the castle in it's, the imperial. It is seat. not. I'm pretty sure it's the Rose Palace, but it's not the Rose Palace. Rose Palace. Oh, oh right. it is the Rose Palace. Yeah, yeah. most, most okay, people wear rose in there. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. rose, rose. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, the city of Elantris. Nope. What about Twilight Falls on Nalthus? Oh, oh. Ooh, I like that, but no. <laughs> okay, well, is uh, it recognizable at a big distance? It's a, it's. It sounds like it is. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, it sounds like it is. Um, 
has Luthadel been guessed? Yes, yes. it was the first guess. Yes. Okay. I'm that's curious hard. if that's not mentioned. specific enough. Jess? That's her? Uh, no, it's not her toe. You could always mm. guess Imperial Seat. Well, now that you said it, it's probably not it. Yeah, I'm like, would you point someone towards the right answer, Eric? I, don't I know. doubt it. I, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't say there are important things that have happened in the Imperial Seat in the story that haven't happened in the palace. <laughs> okay, that's a fair point. Yeah. Excellent. Because if it was going to happen in there, I would, you know, I would, through an argument, I would present my case to them. I think you would be yeah. very fair to say that. <laughs> because it's, I can't get it out of my head. I'm going to make the assumption that Luthadel is not specific enough. Okay. And say the Lord Ruler's throne room within Critic Shaw. <laughs> it is not the Lord Ruler's throne room within Critic Shaw. Okay. I just needed to say that so I could get it out of my head. Okay. <laughs> that everyone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Clue four. This location is known to elicit strong emotions. Easily recognized gonna... from a distance is what is throwing me. I am. Shaw. It is Credit Shaw. I was, I I was going to say that. I knew it. I was like, <laughs> I, I, will, I will have you know. I will have you know that John specifically. He, here's what he says about specificity. As for specificity, <laughs> answers that are less, e.g., Luthadel, or more, e.g., the Lord Ruler's throne room, specific, <laughs> are not intended to be considered correct. So I didn't even need to think about it because he told I me. I was like, <laughs> sorry about I that. was like, that was like, it's too like he should have just said Credit Shaw. I was sitting here like I should have. Oh man, I was literally saying. I am going to steal this guess from Ian and guess yeah. Craddock Shaw. And then Jess was like, hello. Boom. Yeah, it was like, oh, man. I was like, I was on the same wavelength. Yeah, Both Skadrian ones, Jess. Um, Good, nice job. The, the thing is, when I said Luthadel at the beginning, I was thinking of the battle at Craddock Shaw in Hero yeah. of Ages. And yeah, yeah, like, that's yeah. why I went Craddock Shaw eventually. It's yeah. like the exact same battle. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I read Mistborn recently. Oh, Ian's so <laughs> upset. It's so, <laughs> he's so upset. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Oh, the Robbed. last character, uh, it, or sorry, the last clue was a main character chose this hill to die on, but also <laughs> to aspire to power. Okay, here, Ian, here's what I'm thinking. Throne room is not a name of anything. It doesn't have a name. The yeah, Lord it's Ruler's the Lord Ruler's throne room. That doesn't have a copper mine article, Ian. It's, it's not a it's not a proper name for the room. Like but you know, like it, sometimes there are like if you go into like certain like <laughs> estates, they're like, oh, it's the blue room, or oh, this is the unicorn room, or whatever that they do in those rich. Like, sometimes <laughs> rooms mean, have great. names, but. John John, I really appreciate the specificity that made this extremely easy. Uh, that just to, to make that very explicit. I 100% hate you. <laughs> Look, I'm just the messenger, oh Ian. Oh my god. So. I don't I'm hate just... you, I hate this person. Okay, okay, well, the, the views of Ian are not the views of 17 Shard at large. Please. We appreciate you, $10 We appreciate Harold. your support. <laughs> We, we, I think this is very funny. I think this I'm is sorry. very funny as well. My my takeaway from this entire exchange is that <laughs> Ian is objectively wrong in his opinions yeah. about locations. Same with and the so his opinion on Shadesmar thing. should be disregarded. Ooh, ooh, oh, even better. No. Oh, I think old argument is wrong there. Old yeah. arguments. Oh, but okay. but Where the is the kick from server? <laughs> <laughs> no, you'll interrupt my overlay, Ian. We're almost done. <laughs> no. All right. All right. Well, that was a thing. And this was a very long episode. So you know what? I I'm, I'm sorry to keep you waiting for this, this Stormlight 5 prologue episode. But you know what? You got a beefy episode. So you can go to 17shard.com for all your news, discussion, theories, and fun. And lots of discussion on the Stormlight 5 prologue, both so on the forums much. and Discord. So don't don't be shy. We, there's lots to talk about about it. Uh, and I know we didn't get to every little thing, but we, we got the big highlights. So uh, there, there was a lot going on. We, we had to go at a high level. Uh, so this is already ridiculously long. So thank you for listening to this ridiculously long episode. Um, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, and YouTube, uh, and, uh, you can leave us a review on iTunes, you can support us on Patreon, 
Uh, next week, we should, assuming the recording goes well, you should see our live show at JordanCon. So that will be posted <laughs> next week. So you'll see that, assuming it doesn't. Fingers okay. crossed. We assuming, keep the footage. <laughs> assuming it is postable. If it's not postable, then you'll you'll I don't know, you'll get Southern Skadrians, which you'll get sometime. Uh that was also <laughs> delayed from March and I don't even let's know see, where that's going in the schedule. Let's see if we can post our Era 2 episodes before Era 2 is done. No, 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 no. It will, it will, it will, it will. Oh, mm. another piece of news is just days from now, when this airs. Uh, on May 4th, our new series will be uh, posted. We are doing a reread podcast, and it is called Span Reads, mm -hmm. like reading a book. Uh, and that pun is amazing. Oh. Uh -huh. So, yeah, Span <laughs> Reads on Mistborn 1, The Final Empire, will begin mm -hmm. on May 4th. And we're doing weekly things until the end of October, and we know we can get it done because we already all recorded them. Yeah. Boom. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been planning this for so long. So yeah. stay tuned for that. Shardcast is not going anywhere. We're still going to mm -hmm. go on our schedule. Uh, it, we will be going back to every other week soon, but yeah, we've been doing mm -hmm. a lot. So yeah. Anyway, see y'all next time. Bye. 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 Cheers. Ah!